broadcasting from their world headquarters in Texas. It's the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show, the show that discusses arcade repair, restoration, news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Tim and Jonathan. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 61 of the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show for March 2022. My name is Jonathan Leung, and I'm the producer, director, and editor of the Arcade Repair Tips video series. And joining me live and in person tonight is Mr. Arcade Repair Tips himself, Tim Peterson. Tim, how you doing? I'm doing good, John. It almost feels like we should be having this outside today. It's like the perfect day here in Texas. Yeah, I mean, sunny and 70 <laughs> degrees. It's really hard to beat that. Uh, we're coming out of our little cold snap that we had, Tim, over the last couple of days. But uh, unfortunately, Tim, I don't have the setup to do the outdoor, <laughs> so we're just going to have to do it indoors tonight. But we're glad that you guys are here with us and that you'll... Uh, that you're joining us to answer some questions, go over some late, some arcade news, and uh, do some other things. But before we get started, I do have to wish this man a happy birthday. His birthday Thank was you. yesterday. Yeah. So later in the show, we, we will have the ceremonial presentation of the gifts. Okay. <laughs> so we'll have to wait till the midway point. We're going to do that instead of the uh, tech tip that we normally do, guys. So it'll, you know, we'll, it'll take the place of that. So hopefully you'll stay tuned for that. But Tim, how was your birthday? It was good. Um, you know, I, I worked it. You know, the older you get, sometimes it just seems like the celebrations get smaller or it's not a milestone birthday like my 50th or something. So I just went to work and got off early and went to eat with my wife and my in-laws and I just kind of took it easy. But, you know, um, it's so weird. You know, growing up, your closest friends and your even your closest in-laws would know but now you know you're on facebook and stuff like that it's like oh my gosh all my friends from high school and my cousins that you know never really celebrated my birthday before everybody's wishing me happy birthday so it's like i spent half the day saying thank you and uh getting calls and texts and stuff it just uh made it a busy day but i'm very thankful that i have that many friends and people that uh thought about me uh some of our listeners and stuff had messaged me uh, so, you know, it's everybody, uh, I don't know, I guess that's one tradition that probably will never go away. You know, everybody celebrates the day you were born, and I, I guess it's kind of cool. It's always nice to feel a little special for one day. Absolutely, Tim. Well, we're glad you had a good mm -hmm. one. I called him, but yeah. I did not give him his gifts because I knew we were doing this tonight. So, <laughs> right? you don't know what they are. Do you want to show the audience? Maybe they yeah, can let's guess. Yeah, see. We got, oh, they're kind They're of heavy. Cash. You got to watch it. Oh, my gosh. It is heavy. Okay, so there's four gifts in these two boxes. Okay. So, and this one's like attached to this one. Correct. Yeah, well, I just like to package it together. I thought I was going to have to run it over to Tim. I didn't know if Tim was going to be able to make yeah, it here. 30 pounds? It's pretty heavy. Did you stick some weights in there? Is that what of it is? Of course. I got I I to gotta throw out. you off the set. Okay, right. right. Okay. It's probably a little box inside of about five boxes. Or you something. know, yeah, exactly. You know, like, <laughs> anyway. But, you know, I like to confuse you, but I promise that all of those are actually what they are. They are wrapped like they're supposed to be. Okay. We'll, okay. see, we'll see soon then. There you go. So we want to thank you guys again for joining us tonight. Tim, we got the live check going. We got the real hammer, Billy Lee, says, what is up, guys? Hey, Billy. We got Paul Jureus here. He says, hello, all. Hey, Cybermine Paul. Cybermine Arcade says, love both their shirts. So, Tim, I believe yeah. I got you this one for Christmas, You did. Right? This was one of my Christmas presents uh, from this year. <laughs> and then mine, I picked up recently, I think in a Woot sale. Uh, this is this is a uh, Flynn's VR gym. So, and it says, uh, de-res those extra pounds, stationary light cycles, disc courts. Uh, just kind of a little takeoff, maybe a virtual Tron gym there. I Tim. see. So, there you go. Well, uh, Tim, before we get into questions, we actually released a new video. Yeah. I mean, I can't even remember the last time. I think the last time was 2019, <laughs> like before the pandemic. It's been a minute. So I do want to let you guys know that there is a new video out there that's not a live video because obviously we do the live show, but we actually put together a produced video. Right. Yes. Okay. So there we go. So Tim, uh, it was on assembling a cocktail cabinet kit version two with JAMA wiring harness. And we call this the updated 2021. And I know we got some comments like, isn't it 2022? Yes, it is. But Holland Computers refers to this as their updated 2021 edition okay. of this cabinet so that's why we did it like that and in this video tim here shows you how to assemble the updated version 2 2021 21 edition of their cocktail cabinet arcade kit with jamma wiring harness that's available from retroarcade.us slash holland computers so this kit of course guys allows you to make build your own cocktail arcade cabinet it is plug in it is the only plug and play kit on the market made for beginners and we would like to thank holland computers for providing this unit from us for assembly 
and review. So, Tim, the last time we did this, we split the cost with Holland. Uh-huh. And so it was kind of like they paid for part of it, we paid for part of it. Right. But this was actually a full-on, like, they gave it to us. And we right. want to thank uh, Bill and his team at Holland Computers for doing that. Uh, they didn't have to do that. And it didn't really taint our view of the cabinet. We no. still, I mean, we still gave our honest opinions of it, but we did receive the cabinet for free. Uh, hopefully you guys will check it out. We do give kind of a detailed review at the end, Tim. Uh, some of the things, though, that were better over the version 1 of the cabinet, Tim, is that it does actually come with the cocktail clips for the top glass, right. which is very handy. The MDF's a lot tougher than it was in the original cabinet. Plus, they pre-drilled a lot of holes in it so that if you wanted to... For instance, at a coin door, they actually pre-cut out that coin door. We did not right. do that in the video, but if you wanted to do that, if you bought this cabinet kit, then you could actually cut it out, and they pre-cut that for you, so it's very easy to cut out. And in all the places where you would put screws in, they actually put a little starter, uh, a little starter hole there for you. Right. So that way, it'd be very easy for you. So, like, if you want to screw down the power supply. The, um, the 61, if you use a 61 or other JAMA PCB, there's actually holes on that mounting board for that, which, Tim, it made life so much easier. Yeah, so this I mean, one was definitely easier to put together right. than the first one. Not that the first one was tough. This was just easier. It was a, There was the new improved version, I would call it. Exactly. So uh, you guys should check it out. And Tim, I mean, you can just tell by the length of the video how much easier it was. I believe the original video, Tim, was like an hour and 20 minutes. And this one clocks in a little bit over 40 minutes. Okay. And so that just shows you they cut out several steps uh, basically by um, by just kind of uh, reconfiguring the way that you put things together. They were mm -hmm. able to really cut down the time it takes for you to put the cabinet together, which we appreciate. Right. And I know you guys appreciate as well if you're buying this kit. So, I mean, that's very important that you're not having, you know, less time you can spend assembling, Tim, the more time you can spend playing. Right. right. And so and that's if, very important. And if you're brand new, uh, this might be a good video to watch. We show about putting T-molding on. We show how to hook up a joystick. We talk about wiring. Uh, so you might just enjoy that even if you're not buying the cabinet. If you're new and there's a lot of basic stuff that you don't know yet, this might be a good video to watch just to learn some of those tips on hooking up a button, things like that. Absolutely, Tim. So we, again, we want to thank um, Holland Computers for providing the cabinet, Tim. And I mean, we, like I said, we really felt like it was a, a big improvement over the original version. And we hope that they sell a ton of them, Tim, because I mean, it is a really great product. As we all know, it's hard to find cabinets now right. in the wild because it seems like they're getting you know more scarce by the day. So if you can't find one, this is a really great way for you to own a cabinet, put your own cabinet together, and put your, and put whatever game you want to in it, Tim. Of course, we use a 16-1 in the video, but you guys can use whatever kind of Jamma board you want. And they also have some stand-up kits, Tim, and a bar top kit. And we may end up doing some videos on those as well at some point. But nice. for now, for now, we like the cocktail cabinet. We bit, we did the previous version for them. We like this version. So if you're looking for a cocktail cabinet, uh, price is good too, Tim. And you can catch it on sale. I know they had a big President Day mm -hmm. sale, Tim. So you can catch them on sale, 10, 15% off, just depending. So uh, again, really good deal if you're just looking for a solid cabinet to put a game in. Yeah, that's one thing I was just thinking, John. You mentioned the price uh, or the availability of cocktail cabinets have gone away. But the price of wood has gotten so high that it's almost not worth it, even if you want to just completely build one yourself like I ha like we have in the past, I would um, definitely look into this just for the value of what you get for the price, I think is a good value too. Absolutely. For so, something brand new that you can be playing in just a couple of hours. Absolutely. So anyway, we hope you guys check out that video if you haven't <coughs> already. It's uh, like we said, we really enjoyed making it. And we want to thank Bill again uh, for his team. And guys, they have great customer service. I should mention that. So if you have any problems putting together the kit, you can reach out to us or reach out to them. Uh, their customer service I've had to contact in the past and they've always been very helpful. So uh, I want to throw them. Tim, there's not very many companies that have... Mm -hmm really great customer service anymore. It seems to be a dying art, but I will say the Holland Computer seems to have really good customer service. So. I agree. Uh, let's see. Cybermine Arcade says, Tim reminds me of the starry, uh, let's see, um, the start starting, our starring actor in the movie Boiler Room who has a home casino. I don't know if I've seen that one. I don't think I have either. Paul Dre says, back in the day, I was picking up Pac-Mans and Donkey Kongs for a hundred bucks working. Yeah, you see, like finding right. that now is very difficult. And it all has to do with, of course, the market, Tim. Uh, with COVID, I really think we saw in, uh, a lot of people investing. Instead of going on trips, going on vacations, they were investing in improving their home, which means adding home arcades or arcade games. And so a lot of the cheaper deals that we used to find, they're just not there anymore. So if you want a cabinet, this may be a really great way for you to get one. 
Okay, Tim, let us move on with some questions. Now, we have a follow-up real quick from okay. uh, UNK PC Ride. And Tim, I think I accidentally put his name as Chuck on the previous outline. Uh, sometimes, you know, I use the previous outline to make the next month's outline, right. and I'll leave a name up there, and that's what happened with his. But you may remember his problem, Tim, was that he had a police trainer monitor, and it had that rainbow color on it. Correct. And so we gave him a lot of things to try, including, you know, taking out the color... Uh, the color transistors mm -hmm. to try that to see if it would remove the color. So he did get back with us, Tim, and here's what he wrote. He said, I'm happy to report the problem is solved. Mark this one in the book, Arcade Gurus. I soldered a, a 2SC2068 for the red transistor, Q201 on the neck board, and the two red pots, VR101, and it fixed it. Woohoo! I picked up this game for $200 and they threw in an extra CRT, harvest or invested $20 in parts and shipping to get it up and running. So, Tim, this was, you know, to be honest with you, when I saw his problem at first, I was really worried because that rainbow screen mm -hmm. gets me really nervous, like it's a tube issue. Right. But he was able to solve it just by uh, basically resoldering the, uh, the red transistor Q201 and then and then replacing the 2K red pots, and then he got it working. So, I yeah. mean, sometimes people will put in the wrong value, Tim, and it'll cause stuff like this to happen. Or in his case, you know, over time, the solder on those will either crack or they'll it'll get cold, and all of a sudden it's not making a good connection to the board anymore. And so basically for $20 worth of parts, uh, UNK PC right here was able to get his game up and running. That's awesome. I'm glad to, um, I'm glad. I always love it when people come back and tell us. Uh, sometimes... Uh, we're on and sometimes we're way off and um, it's always nice to know what was the fix so guys by all means if you listen uh, and you send in a question and uh, you do fix it but send a follow-up sometimes that just helps uh, and also goes into that kind of memory base if not but the one up here uh, so that we could help somebody else fix their issue Absolutely, Tim. And, you know, that, like I said, I was really getting nervous for him because I was thinking we may have had more of a tube issue, like a magnetized shadow mask or something like that. And so the fact he was able to fix that, I think, is really good. And it just shows you, uh, you know, if you're having those kind of rainbow issues, it may be good to check your color transistors on your neck board, also on the chassis if you have those, and make sure that those are functioning properly. And that seems to be the case in, in his case, and we're glad you got it up and running. So Awesome. Okay, Tim, well, let us move on with the actual questions for this month. And the first one we have is from Tom. And Tom writes, Hi, I have a cocktail cabinet with a 1033 <coughs> Game Elf board. The up joystick on player one does not work. All the other directions do. I don't think it's in the wiring. When in test mode, the IO shows one, meaning the joystick is pressed up, even when they are not. It never shows zero. I have tried disconnecting the joystick wiring, and it still shows one. Any ideas? I'm not sure if it's a bad board or not. Please advise. So, Tim, this is interesting here because um, typically when you have, like, the I.O. showing one, like like the up arrows being depressed, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it may be because they wired it wrong with, like, the normally closed. But Correct. he's saying here he actually yeah, unplugged, unplugged it, it and, it's and it's still showing, still showing one. Okay, so with that in mind, what do you think is going on with Tom's 1033 in one Game Elf board that well, it's doing the up issue? My gut reaction still tells me that probably is a wiring issue. So somewhere along the, wi the line, the wire that goes to that is touching a ground, um, and that could be causing the issue. And it could be way back at where it comes to the board or something. If not, and he needs to check for continuity all the way from the board, all the way to the joystick. Um, but, uh, but you know, he could also play around with that a little bit. Um, but if it's not the wiring, then there's really no other choice. It's in a, The switch is unhooked and it's showing that. Uh, it probably is some kind of board issue. But I still really, uh, most of those issues typically are wiring issues. Got you, Tim. And I, I think you're right in this particular case. We do mostly see this as a wiring issue, but the fact that he unplugged it kind of leads us away from the switch. Where right. We may think that would that would be where the issue most yeah, likely is. Yeah, because I've seen bad switches, switch stuck, uh, switch wired up incorrectly. He eliminated all that, which was good. So that basically just leaves board and wiring, in my opinion. Gotcha. So, I mean, what could be happening here, Tim, is maybe, like you're saying, maybe that one player up is being contacted by a ground somewhere along the line? Somewhere. And, you know, uh, these things a lot of times have been converted. Uh, you'll go back, there'll be wires just taped up. Um, you know, there's probably, it just depends. If it was a brand new game, I would be more suspicious of the wiring because it would just probably go straight up there. 
but it's probably been hacked, uh, resoldered, reconnected. So just follow that wire. I guarantee you, probably somewhere in that wire, in that wire, is a break or something that's wired up together. It's probably touching a ground and keeping it on all the time. Gotcha, Tim. Well, with that said, let me go ahead and throw up the slide here, basically just summarizing what Tim went over. From your description, it's possible you may have a bad board. Okay, I mean, that's a possibility, but before we can determine that it, that, that is the case, we need to take a closer look at the wiring. Start at the JAMA harness, follow the one player up wire, which Tim actually labeled here, pin 18 on the part side, as it goes to your joystick switch. Make sure that it does not come in contact with a ground wire anywhere along the way. Pay close attention to the connectors that the wire goes through as it's possible that these could be miswired. So sometimes, um, Tim, we've seen this before where you've got a connector down uh, with this wire going through it and it's ex it's being connected by a ground on the other end right. and you don't realize it. Right. So pay close attention anywhere you have connectors, you may have a miswire. Tim also mentioned that you may have a miswire if you have just a bundle of wires that are, you know, either electrical taped together or they could be a wire nutted together or mm -hmm. something like that. Make sure that that wire is not coming in contact with anything that's a ground because that would be causing the, the up direction. So you can also try touching this wire to a ground while in test mode to see if the, vi the value changes. So like, let's say you're in test mode, you've got the connector unplugged. You could try touching a ground to it to see if it changes at all. And Tim, something I'm thinking of right now is you might try checking the continuity with the player one up and a ground wire to see if you get continuity. Is there a ground actually actually being connected to that somewhere? If there is, you may get continuity between that and another ground, correct? Correct. And uh, one thing that that I have, I've actually had this similar problem before and it drove me crazy. I couldn't find a, a wire. What I did was coming off the harness that you see I gave it about three inches. I actually cut that wire just to see, is it this wire or is it that? And it was that wire. And so what I did then was instead of trying to track down where in the world that was through there, I put a new wire right there where I cut it. I left myself about that much room and I ran that all the way to the joystick and just bundled it and zip tied it and it was fine that way. Because sometimes, you know, it's like you said, it may go to two or three connectors, um, maybe some old wires and stuff. And sometimes it's really hard to find exactly where it's touching. And it could be just a skint place in it that's touching a ground somewhere. And it, it caused that. But um, it could be the board. But that'd be one quick way. And it doesn't, even if it's not the wire and it is the board, it's not that hard to solder back what you, or butt splice where you just cut it. So that's one good way to kind of determine, is it that wire, instead of trying to track and find exactly which spot it is. Absolutely, Tim. That's not a bad idea. <clears throat> if you cut that wire about three inches, leaving at least enough room for you to solder back in. Now, Tim, if you're familiar with putting uh, pins in a jamma harness, you could always do that as well. Yeah, you, you could, could pop just it out. pop the pin out. Right, you could do that. Most but of the time, it's easier just to cut it. Correct, exactly. You may not always have jamma pins, but you always probably have a butt butt connector or soldering iron or wire nut on you. So, right. you know, cut that back three inches, turn on the game. If it's still showing up at that point, probably in the board, right, Tim? Yeah, it's, it's probably got to be. And then, even then, I would look to where I flip my board around uh, to where the pins come in that some float solder could have just flowed and touching a ground on it or something. It might be something fixable without just chunking the board unless it's a chip problem or something. And then, you know, on a um, 60 and one or something like that, it's probably not worth fixing, but it's worth a, a look. And you could probably even track it down from there with a m meter and doing some uh, continuity checks. Agreed. Yeah. So if you want to go back through the board from that input, Tim, and see <clears> where <throat> it's going and make sure there's good connections through there, you could. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's the way we're going to go about troubleshooting it, though, Tom. I think you should try the wiring first, like we talked about, like Tim talked about. And then maybe you can start tracing back to the board if you determine that it is not a wiring issue. But always suspect the wiring first because, I mean, Tim, these boards, while they can have their issues, we all know that especially like the Game Up boards are very cheaply made. Very rarely do we see this um, mm -hmm. where we have different, like a weird input that's kind of stuck. So uh, try the wiring first. If none of that works, might try going back through the board, see if you can find anything. If you bought it from, if you bought it recently, a lot of, the, if you, and if you bought it from somebody who's not like on AliExpress, um, no. most places will give you a return on it, especially if it's got a, a problem like this and will allow you to return it and you can get a replacement for it. So. Sure. 
But anyway, Tom, hopefully it answers your question, and good luck figuring out why the up direction is stuck on your game elf cocktail board. Okay, let's see. Oh, man, I'm already into the question. We're already into the question that uh, gave this episode its title, Tim. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I titled this episode X-Men Arcade Virtual Boy Edition. All right. Okay, now do you remember the Virtual Boy, Tim? I do remember Virtual Boy. Hopefully the audience out there remembers Virtual Boy as well. If you remember, Tim, it was a 3D console <laughs> made by Nintendo that only, only used red, red <laughs> LEDs. And All so right. uh, we got a picture from James here that kind of reminded me of that. So let's go <laughs> ahead and get to James's question real quick. I recently bought a X-Men 1992 four-player arcade by Konami. I don't know much about it. The red or the color of my screen stays red through the whole time it's on. I tried adjusting the colors like your video, like your videos, but it isn't doing much. Is it the motherboard or what? Thanks for your input. Now, Tim, you'll see the video link here. We have this video link down below if you want to see an extended version of this. But, Tim, uh-huh. I put just a screenshot of the video. And as you can see, it looks very Virtual Boy-ish. <laughs> yes, it does. Is that a good way to say it? <laughs> I was kind of wondering where the title came from, but then it reminded me. Oh, yeah, it was only red. That's a good that's a Exactly. Funny title. So it is very, very red. If you watch the rest <clears throat> of the video, you guys can get a better idea. And like I said, the link is down below if you guys want to see it. But, Tim, we're talking about basically we only got red on the screen. Okay, oh, We're missing all of colors and right. so uh, what does James need to do in order to get his 1992 X-Men Konami arcade cabinet back up and running with full color well the first thing that we're going to do is check the input wires just like we were just talking about you want to make sure go back and trace those wires coming from uh, the monitor I mean from the chassis down to the game board and make sure that you have all the colors and they're all in the right place and everything because if those get mixed up you can get some just one screen color like that um then you know i would look at the drive transistor you've got the drive transistors and make sure that they're okay um we shot a video on checking your tube to make sure that it's not the tube um so but you can also go and check and make sure that you're getting the different colors for your tube so that you know it's a board or a monitor issue. Uh, So it's probably a monitor issue uh, is what we normally see this problem. It could be a board issue, but it's probably a monitor issue um, that the red drive is just way high. And if he's trying to adjust and it's not coming down, then it's probably time to do some uh, work in that area. Exactly, Tim. So I, I think your your first inclination there is very good. Let's start with the monitor <laughs> input wires, guys. We see we see it very often where um, th- over time the solder on the input pins will become cold and cracked or broken, mm-hmm. and it's just from connecting it, unconnecting it, connecting it, unconnecting it. So you may want to touch up the solder on those and check the wiring to make sure all the wiring is flowing all the way through from your game board to your monitor. Again, Tim mentioned continuity tests. That's a very good way to make sure that that is the case. So, obviously, we have red, Tim, but we're missing the blue and the green, right? right? And so that's what we're trying to get back for you. So, Tim, I'm going to go ahead and throw up the slide here so we can give uh, James kind of a summary of what we're talking about. From your picture and video, James, it looks like the only color you see on the screen is red. Both the blue and green seem to be absent. This is usually caused by an input with or an issue with the monitor. Um, So, start off this repair by making sure the input wires that run from your game board to your monitor are connected properly, Okay. Check that first. Check the color drive transistors on the monitor chassis and the neck board. Make sure those are good. Uh, see our post on checking a monitor tube. Tim mentioned that for more information. Now, if the monitor seems to be working properly, there is a, a custom IC chip on the board, Tim, in the video output section that may be having trouble. And we've seen right. that in a couple of repairs that we know people have done. And so getting a hold of those custom chips can be difficult. But if you send it off to repair guys, a lot of times they'll be able to get one from, from another uh, harvested board. And so I would say that's rare. We don't see it as much a board issue as we do. Now, with that said, Konami boards tend to have more issues than some other boards. Uh, but with that said, Tim, 80% of the time this is a monitor issue, right? Right. Usually. Right. So let's go through the monitor things first and make sure that our monitor is working properly. And Tim, of course, this is a JAMA game, so you could try hooking up another JAMA board in there to see if you have the red on the other JAMA board. That's always a great way. Just a quick swap. Even if it's a vertical game, we'll tell you whether or not you're getting those colors on your monitor as well. Uh, Tim, we, we had Paul here. He said, colors are the easiest to troubleshoot because 
uh, you have three identical circuits. So exactly. Right. So I mean, it's not it's not that bad. And of course, if you can identify which monitor you have or send us a picture of your chassis, we can help you troubleshoot this further. James, we didn't get that information here, Tim. We that just would got help. A, exactly. Yeah. We just got a picture of what the monitor looks like from the front. So if you want to send that over, we can <laughs> we can guide you on exactly what you need to troubleshoot from there. Uh, anything else for James here, Tim? Before we move on. Well, like he said, they are identical. So you could check the values on one and check the value on another and check the value on another. And the, um, if the values are different on, then you know which kind of maybe which one to replace. Absolutely. The so, one that's way off. Or well, like not I said, reading, I mean, you right. also know blue and green aren't working. So right, you can exactly. always take the blue and green ones and then go from there kind of thing. So, um, but if you give us the, if you know the make and model of your chassis, we can help you out with that as well. So James, hopefully answers your question and good luck repairing your X-Men Virtual monitor. Boy Edition. Virtual Boy Edition <laughs> monitor. So there we go. Okay, let's see what we got here, Tim. Uh, YouTube Punk Series says, hi, howdy. Hello, YouTube Punk. So um, let's see, Encore MPW is here. He says, hello, friends. So let's see. Um, Cybermine so Arcade says, new pots for adjustments. It could be that it needs new pots, but typically, if, typically you'll get something a little different for that. Um, it's possible, though, that the adjustments may need to be touched up with solder, and it's possible you may need to replace them. But the fact we're not getting any color, Tim, right. typically leads us closer to something in the actual circuit, so like a transistor or something like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Paul Jure thinks it's a K7000, probably. Um, K7000s were very common during this time. Uh, you know, if you had to guess, it'd probably be the way mm -hmm. to go. So, let's see. Um, and uh, Cyber Mine Arcade, Rejuvenate. When we're losing a color, it's possible. But if you watch our video on checking a monitor tube, Tim, we have a way that you can test that mm -hmm. to see if it is the tube. So basically, if you ground out uh, the pins on the neck board for the individual colors, if those colors come up, then that means that you should be, that means you, the tube is okay, but you have something in the uh, individual color circuits that may be giving you trouble. Right. So. But we have seen that. So it is yeah. true that, um, you know, you could just have a short in, in your tube, you know, that can be fixed with a rejuvenator or something, but not very, not as common. Correct. So let's see. Um, the Ant Arcade. I'm having trouble locating LEDs that mimic the same color as older bulbs. Marquee and door lights. Putting normal white LEDs changes the color too much for my liking. Tim, anywhere that we can get some, um, maybe some soft white LEDs? Um, well, I'm sure by now, um, when I go to Lowe's, it takes me forever to pick one out for my house because they have 15 different kinds now. Right. It used to be LED or not. And now it's like bright white LED, natural light LED, everything's LED. So I'd be surprised if, um, you know, there's not uh, somebody selling whatever you want. I was about to say, I'm pretty sure I've got some LEDs in here that are soft white. Tim, they typically measure those, you know, like with the K ratings. I forget yeah. what they are. Um, so, like, you can get a soft white. I forget, like, what the what the different ratings are. But if you find if you look for soft white LEDs um, and LED bulbs, we've found some in the past. Especially are, on pinball okay. sites because they're real particular Correct. about their bulbs, and, and which naturally, in a pinball game, some of them I like really bright stuff and some people like the softer ones so check pinball life um a couple of those good pinball sites you'll probably find um some of those to your liking i know i picked up my phone tim did you know that this is all led driven here <laughs> i did so not this know is this. this is soft white here tim okay. let me see if i can let's see if i can find my little thing and we'll we'll crank it up so we can show everybody the difference right so you know, I replaced these when we had COVID, you know? Oh, okay. So, and went with, uh, went with like, uh, Wi-Fi controlled uh, lights. Oh, I'm going to have to log in. Um, but, yeah, so I can change those on the fly if I need to. Pretty cool. And it actually does a, uh, like, a color rainbow kind of thing. I may have done I can't remember if I've done it on the show before. I don't recall. I didn't yeah. know you had those. I don't, yeah, you may not I have. I didn't know that they changed. There you go. Well, you know, I mean, like you said, you go to Lowe's now. And it's like everybody, you know, it's like everybody has, um, I can't remember what my password is. That's great. I'll do it later. But yeah, I mean, so if I log in, I can actually control all of these. They'll turn different colors and things. So yeah, you've basically got all sorts of stuff. So uh, let's see. Uh, the ants used a LED bulb maybe instead of a strip. Let's see. Um, let's see. I'm just looking. YouTube, uh, Todd Tuggy always um, I'm plugging pinball sites for lights. Yeah, pinball sites are great. And we have several of them listed on our <sighs> resources page at resources.arcaderepairtips.com or, or, slash resources. Excuse well, I just, me. Yeah, and I say that too because the lighting to me is such a, a important part of a pinball game that a lot of them really, and they, like I said, I know for a fact, you because uh, at Chucky, 
when I worked there, they even three or four years ago, they had a lot of different choices uh, for different lightings and stuff. Absolutely. So uh, hopefully, in Arcade, that answers your question. Check our resources page and check for the pinball suppliers under there. So arcadeapprentice.com slash resources. Um, pinball Soul, Tim, is that the one we order a lot from? Marco will probably have some. Yeah. Marco will definitely have some. So, I mean, either one of those places. Pinball I, we, Life is who I order. Yeah, Pinball Life, excuse me. That's pinball Life. Stuff from. Pinball Life will have, have um, and Marco will have them. Um, somebody. So if, you, if you're looking for a supplier, check our resources page. Uh, lots of people there. So. Okay, Tim, let us move on to Mark. Now, Mark actually kind of had a follow-up from the previous question. Now, okay. you remember last month, what was the title of the episode? Oh, Where there's smoke, know. there's Tron, Tron, I believe right. is what it was. And so Mark sent in kind of this reminder saying, you know, maybe it's not the power supply, maybe it's something else. And okay. so let's go ahead and read that from Mark here. Hi, Tim and Jonathan. I'm a fairly new listener to your podcast and really enjoy your show. I was in the amusement industry back in the early 80s with games on location, but now I'm just a game collector. I have a Tron and a stack of boards. Over the years, I've needed to swap out a board and have had two boards smoke when I power up the game. The other three boards are working just fine. My cabinet had an original power supply the first time and I thought they may have fried my board. So I installed the switching power supply and adapter board from Arcade Shop and it worked great for a few years. Then I had some ROM errors, so I swapped the board set, and to my surprise, it smoked just like the other one did many years ago with the original power supply. The smoke didn't come from the power supply, though, it, but it came from the middle board where the power connects. I have attached a photo of my two boards with the one L116 burnt. I hope this helps track down the problem if he had smoke like mine did. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> so he actually sent in a picture, Tim, of this, um, of the, um, the L, uh, what was it they said? One, uh, 115? 116, 116. excuse me. The L116, sorry, my eyes are not that good. And so, like, this is two different board sets, Tim, but the same, the same, same little problem, circuit. Yeah. Right, exactly. Where they've had the uh, L116 blown. Now, Tim, this is actually a very common problem, and we've seen this before. But I wanted to cover it, because I don't, I, I emailed back Mark, and I was like, do you know that this is a pretty common problem? Uh-huh. And so I didn't know, he didn't say whether or not he fixed it or not. So I went ahead and, and sent, you know, what we usually think it is. But for those who may not be informed, Tim, when we see that L six L116, what's usually the problem? Well, you know, we always say whether well, smoke or fire, uh -huh. so be careful. Uh, but the fact that it did it to two different areas, um, usually there's something going on with the 12-volt line. So it, it's not necessarily... Um, it's not necessarily uh, the power supply problem, right? But it probably is the board issue. It's kind of a common board issue that happens. Mm -hmm. It just happens. There's not. It showed. He showed it happened with the original power supply, and it happened with the new power supply. Right. So you kind of danged if you do, danged if you don't. It's just going to happen. And what we found is that bad tantalum caps on the I/O board have been known to cause this issue. So those caps going bad over time. Uh, may be a good idea if you have an extra board to replace these. Uh, but if you check those caps and replace those, a lot of times uh, you can replace those and replace this L116 and you should be back up and going. It's not a, not a complicated fix uh, that you probably would need to send off for board repair. This is something that most of our average collectors could do. Absolutely, Tim. So this is, like Tim mentioned, this is on the Super Sound I.O. board. Yeah. And so it's basically a short in that 12-volt line. It's usually due to some bad tantalum capacitors on there. And so, um, you know, we've seen this We've seen this several times, actually. It's very common just on Tron boards. And Tim, you've worked on a lot of Trons. Yeah. So it's like we know, you know, we just know this from experience. But this is something that we've seen. So, Mark, if you want to get yours up and running, that's all you need to do. Order some new tantalum capacitors. You can get those from ArcadePartsAndRepair.com, uh, which is one of the suppliers we recommend, Tim. But I'll go ahead and put this up here. Here. Again, smoke is not a good sign. All right. <laughs> okay, like we talked about last month, guys, smoke, not a good sign. Okay. Well, we were unsure of what was causing the smoke in our previous Tron question, Tim. The culprit here is definitely a problem with the game board. There's no doubt. Not with the power supply. Right. But with the game board. And in our experience, the L116 usually blows like this if there's a short on the 12 volt line, like Tim mentioned. Um, bad tantalum capacitors on the Super Sound IO, what a lot of people call the SSIO board, uh -huh. have been known to cause this issue. Check these caps, replace any bad ones, replace the 116 inductor, and you should be good to go. Now that fixes it 80% of the time. Okay. okay. Again, 80% of the time. It, there is you could have another short Tim somewhere on that 12 volt line okay so we're not saying that this is like a hundred percent gonna fix it but eight percent of the time when this happens this is the fix 
So, I mean, just keep that in mind. So if you do all of this, Mark, and it still doesn't fix it, get back with us and we can give you a couple other things to try. We can help you track down, see if there's another short on that 12 volt line. So. But you can imagine if the capacitors on the monitor chassis after, you know, we're talking guys 40 years ago uh, are, are drying up and would fail and cause your monitor problems, then a lot of the capacitors on your boards are going to start are doing the same thing. They're dried out, they're not working, and they're allowing uh, too much to go through there and they're blowing things like this. So we're and smoking them. Exactly. So. so there you go. So if you have that problem with the L116, guys, make sure you replace the tantalum capacitors on your Super Sound IO board and you should be good to go. Again, fixes it 80% of the time. So, Mark, if you try that out, let us know if you end up fixing those boards. Because it sounds like what Mark's doing right now is just swapping in boards right. as he blows them. He's um, got his stash from the 80s, exactly. but it's getting kind of thin. No, you need to fix a, those. Right. Exactly. You need to keep, yeah, you want to, I understand swapping in a good board for a bad board, Tim. We do it all, all the time. Right. But you got to fix the bad board at some point or you run out of boards. And that's right. what we don't want <laughs> you to do, Mark. So hopefully that'll help you get those two boards uh, set up and repaired and everything like that. Let us know if you attempt it and how it goes. Okay, Tim, we got a, uh, we got, it looks like a question from Nate Berg here in the live chat. He says, I have a Rush Alcatraz edition that does not pass the test upon startup. It asks, it asks to press the abort button to pass the test screen afterwards. Works perfectly. However, they're on timers, so no one would have, so, so someone would have to press abort every morning to get, excuse me, to pass the screen. I changed out the steering wheel and it did not fix the issue. The force feedback does not work. However, it's linked to a fully working one. We switched the force feedback with the working one and it didn't fix the issue. Could this be a problem with the main PCB? So Tim, uh, you, <clears throat> you've worked a lot with these driving games in your time at Chuck E. Cheese. We've got mm -hmm. an Alcatraz Edition Rush here. And so he's saying that it does. it's getting some sort of error on the self-test. Right. Only one of his units. Okay. Does not sound like it's in the force feedback because the force feedback has been fixed. Okay. Or, or he tried, he took the good force feedback, swapped it, and it still came up with the air. Right. So main PCB issue or something yeah, else? Yeah, it's a main PCB issue. Now there's a battery on there that he keeps having to do this every day, and it works after that, right? Right. So I would try to replace that um, battery. What do you call those? I always call them a watch battery, John. Point cell. Coin cell battery, thank you. It may be, I think it, it may be like the same as a PC, maybe a 2032. Yeah. But you need to make sure, you know, whatever it is, make sure you just put the same one that's in there now. I would replace that. If it's not that, there's a chip right near there that I have been told is virtually impossible to find. Okay. And so it's kind of like if the battery doesn't fix it and it is that chip, um, there's not much you can do about it. Um, I recently ran across a similar issue. Uh, never would go past that screen, though. And so it was that chip on that board, and um, we were, you know, unless you have another board you can rob a chip from, um, then it's you're, you're just out of luck. So I will say this: we're getting better with uh, some of these custom IC chips, Tim. They are starting, like some people are starting to manufacture replacements. We see that with the Konami boards. We mentioned uh -huh. the Konami boards earlier. There are some people who are starting to uh, manufacture like the replacement sound chips on Konami boards and things. But I don't know if that Rush board has been is in that is in that area or not yet um <clears throat> hopefully at some point somebody will but until then you're kind of stuck with what you got i can't remember the chip offhand but i know that um i sent I, I gave up i sent one in to probably the guy on the internet if you do any kind of google search his name's going to come up because he does a lot of those repairs and uh he'll tell you right off the bat unrepairable if that chip is bad gotcha so um and and that may just be him there may be others that can fix it or can work around that chip or have come up maybe by now. It's been a few months since I've worked on one. Um, have come up with a, a fix, but I'm not aware of it. So if anybody has or knows of this issue in the chat room, please chip in. Or if we hear about it after the show later on, somebody watching this, oh, I know, I have that. Uh, let us know so we can pass that info along. Absolutely. So, Nate, I think the first order of business, like Tim mentioned. Chase that battery. Yeah, try the battery replacement real quick. Maddie Moe also said a 2035 will work. I said a 2032. Uh -huh. uh, the only difference a lot of times, as long as the voltage is the same, right. Tim, it's fine. Um, the only difference is, like, the thickness of the battery. And so, like, you know, if you have a 2035 lying around, but you don't have a 2032, but it fits in the coin slot, it's fine. Uh, as long as the voltage is the same, that's what we're looking for. So, I mean, just try to replace that um, and see if it'll, if it, will it remember the abort and the bypass if you replace the battery I, at least? I think so. So that's what the hope is. And I, like I said, guys, we're stretching a 15-year-old memory here that we could do that. And if you could get past that screen, it would kind of remember that, okay, I'm I'm okay. 
it and it'll start remembering that. Otherwise, it's it's not remembering that it passed its initial test and it's making you do it every time. That's what I remember. Although, like I said, um, I am uh, naturally with a birthday, I am getting old. So, <laughs> you know. Well, I'll say we've seen that in similar games, Tim. I've got a Mortal Kombat two over there. It's got the same kind of problem. If the if the coin cell dies, then all of a sudden you lose all your settings and you have to press the button every time it boots up. Right. You know. So it's the same. It's kind a of similar thing. idea as what I'm thinking. If it's the problem that I remember. Sounds good. So Nate, try that out. Let us know how it goes. And uh, you know, and, and like you said, Tim, if somebody knows of some of somebody who is now making these replacement chips on the uh, on the rush boards, let us know as well. So, okay, uh, Nate. Oh, he had a follow up here, Tim. Can you replace the battery when it's off or while it's on? I heard there are some games that need to be on uh, while changing the battery. Typically, no, we always do it with off. it off. I mean, I've never replaced one with the game on. On that one, you would definitely do it with it off. Yeah, I've never replaced one with the game on. I've always done it with it off. I mean, some people may do that with, like, CPS2 boards, Yeah, I guess. that's what he's thinking about. But even a CPS2 board will hold the settings for, like, 30 minutes while you do the battery replacement. Yeah, so, hard. I mean, it's I still I still tend to do to keep it off. It's too easy for you to slip or touch something that you shouldn't touch while it's on. I would definitely turn it off. Sounds good. So, okay, let's see. Okay, I think we're all caught up. So, Nate, uh, let us know how it goes. You can follow up with us via email, questions at arcaderepairtips.com if you need additional help. Okay, Tim, let us move on to our question from Russ. And Russ says, I have a 1981 Sega Gremlin Frogger game. All original, Tim. All original. I got it free from a guy that said it just quit. I told him it could be the power supply, but anything at that point, so he just gave it to me. The power supply is bad, some diodes bad, and a capacitor blown, he says. Um, my question is, I see a lot of people using the Suzo HAP style power supplies, but I see on the schematic <coughs> that there is a negative 12 volts. I don't see any of these power supplies that have negative 12 volts, so I'm confused on what I need. I'm really wanting to get up this up and running. Any help would be appreciated. By the way, I love your YouTube channel. I'm a subscriber, and I'm in the process of binge-watching your vids. LOL. Thank you in advance. Well, Russ, we like, we're glad that you like the YouTube channel. We're glad you're binge watching, you know, Hey, even when you're asleep, man, just let those things roll, right. you know, so we can get the ad revenue. No, just well, yeah. <laughs> right. well, we always say there's no prize for torturing yourself watching all those. So, um, but thank you for, for that. Um, you know, I don't remember a negative 12 on a Frogger board. Uh, he, he says the schematics have that, but I don't recall that, um, on the on the uh, the wiring pinouts. Right, stuff. exactly. So I mean, I searched him. I don't remember see... hooking up a twelve volts there. Right, before. I searched or negative all over. 12, I'm right, sorry. I searched all over to see if I could find a pinout that had a negative twelve on it for Frogger. I yeah. checked every version of Frogger that I could, every website I could, to see if I could find a negative 12. And not one pinout showed a negative 12 coming from the power supply. Okay. So if you're seeing on the schematic, it could mean that it's being changed on the board or at board level at some point if it needs it. Uh, Tim, I did not look at the schematic to see that. I was okay. just like, I all I really want to know is, is it getting negative 12 from the from the power supply? Could also just be a misprint or something in an old schematic where it, you don't see the plus. Right. I think it's a 12... I think it's a positive 12 volts. Right. So every pinout I consulted, I looked at everyone I could find. None of them showed a negative 12 volts coming from the power supply. Now, with that said, it may use negative 12 volts somewhere, guys, and it may be changed on the board, okay? Because you could you could whip up a quick circuit that would flip that. We've talked about that in the past, Tim, mm -hmm. uh, to negative 12 if you needed it. But, Tim, no power supply is supplying negative 12 volts to a Frogger board. Not that I'm aware of. So no. and, and so we went ahead and we... You know, with that in mind, we would say, of course, you can just use a regular power supply if you don't need the negative 12, right? Sure. And the fact that Arcade Shop, Tim, sells a kit for this, and the kit itself, doesn't it, it, it doesn't have a circuit on it, I don't think. It looks very it looks very simple. Um, I don't think it has anything to convert to negative 12. So it just doesn't look like, if it has negative 12 that's using in the schematic, it's not pulling from the power supply. It could be using negative 12, not saying it's not using negative 12, just saying it's not coming from the power supply, and that is the key. And as long as that's the case, you can use a standard Suzo HAP power supply. So, uh, Tim, I went ahead and kind of summarized all that here. According to the Frogger pinouts that we have found, and Tim, like I said, I scoured everywhere I could find, none of them show negative 12 volts coming from the power supply, which means you should be able to use a standard Suzo HAP style switching power supply with no issues, or Peter Chow style power supply. 
Uh, you can either rewire the cabinet yourself or you could go the power supply replacement kit route from Arcade Shop that comes with the board that should interface with your existing wiring, making it a plug and play solution. Tim, we've talked about that in the past. Um, it's really nice. With that said, probably cheaper to rebuild the current power supply if there are only a couple of parts that are bad. Now, Tim, obviously Russ has some experience because he identified that there was at least like a couple diodes and a capacitor bad. Mm-hmm. And so those power supplies, Tim, classic linear power supplies are very easy to re rebuild for the most part. You just replace bad parts if you find any bad par parts and just move along until you get the voltage that you need. Okay. Right. And so if you're, if you see some bad diodes in a bad capacitor, replace the bad diodes in a bad capacitor, more than likely you'll be back in business pretty quickly. Okay. So if you want to go that route, you can, but you can use a Suzo HAP style power supply if you would like, or you can buy that nice nifty kit that comes with the board and, uh, uh from arcade shop, Tim, that makes it super plug and play easy for you to replace it. Really depends up to you. We like to keep things as original as possible, as long as possible. Um, but there's something to be said about having a new power supply that's easy to dial in the voltages on and just works. So yeah. But I, I agree. My first step would probably be just to fix the original power supply. Mm -hmm. And Omega Mark here agrees. Fix the original power supply. Send it to someone if needed instead of a switcher. Tim, I think for those froggers, they sell a rebuild kit. Mm -hmm. And so, or you can you can just uh, look at the parts, like I said, that are bad, replace those. But I think there are some rebuild kits out there for those. So you may just contact like Arcade par Parts and Repair and get a rebuild kit and see if that works as well because it probably includes the diodes and the capacitors that you're looking for so but yeah i mean we would probably go the repair route on the mm -hmm. power supply but nothing no harm done tim if you want to go with the suzo hap switching if you want to install that yourself or if you want to go with the arcade shop board we've done the arcade shop board plenty of times plenty uh and it, it, it has worked well pretty much in every instance um, we talked in the past, you know, Ken Graham, Tim, uh -huh. uh, you know, rest in peace, uh, you know, told us that when you use a switching power supply with Williams boards, it can sometimes cause some funky things to happen whenever, uh, whenever it powers down. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's a good reason to go with the original power supply with Williams games. But outside of that, we don't know many games that have that kind of requirement uh, with the switching power supply. So, no. and a Williams game will still work with a switching power supply. It just may erase your settings sometimes. Exactly. That's the only difference. You get so. some random issues. Right, exactly. So, I mean, it's not like it won't work. It would still work. But, um, but yeah, so it's just up to you, Russ, as to what you want to do with your Frogger. Uh, we would rebuild. You may want to put the kit in there or just put a power supply in there. Totally up to you. Let us know which way you decide to go. We'd love to hear how you're progressing with your Frogger. So, okay, Tim, let's see. Our next question is from Bill. So I'm going to throw bills up here. I have a Miss Pac-Man full-size arcade game that works great, with the exception that the horizontal needs to be adjusted smaller. It doesn't fit in the screen. I can move the picture up and down with the adjustments, but not the overall size, which needs to shrink down. I can do that with the width. Uh, I can do that with the width or vertical adjustments. What am I missing? Thank you, Bill. So Tim, um, this is something that happens quite a bit. It's like I can I can adjust the uh, the vertical, but I can't adjust the horizontal kind of thing. And so, um, you know, with that in mind, uh, what does Bill need to adjust in order to get that horizontal to move the way he wants? Well, it kind of depends on the chassis. You know, a G07 has jumpers and stuff that, that you move that mm -hmm. can help you do that. Other versions, um, you know, you have to rebuild that area. Or, and then sometimes you just got to get the TV alignment tool and mess with the coil. Right. Um, but, or replace the coil or some of the capacitors in that area. So a lot of it kind of depends on the monitor chassis that we're working with. But usually uh, it, they're all fixable um, and it just kind of depends on which one that you have. And he didn't say, correct? No, he didn't. But Tim, I went ahead and put this, um, I went ahead and put this illustration from the, from Geo7. You've probably seen this label before, guys, right. if, you've, if you've opened any arcade game that uses like a, like a Geo7 in it, but has this adjustment label, Tim. And you'll see, like, it, I love this because it shows exactly where all the adjustments are. But I wanted to put this up here, Tim, because it talks about the pins that you were talking about, like the horizontal centering tabs, uh -huh. for instance, which may help you. But it also shows the location width of coil. the width coil, which is, um, if you're looking at it, it's on the far right uh, side there, kind of in the very back of the monitor chassis, behind the focus and brightness adjustments on the fly back there. Uh -huh. And so it's kind of back behind there. And so that way, Bill, you could see when Tim is talking about using a TV alignment tool to adjust the width coil, that's what he's talking about. Right. Is that. Okay. Now, Tim, something we haven't talked about in a while, too, are width kits, right? Yes. So he could all, if, if the width coil adjustment doesn't work, he could try to install a width kit as well, correct? Right, which would basically be those capacitors in that area. Polypropylene. Yes, and the 
sometimes the coil itself. Uh, refilling the solder on the back of those helps sometimes. But yeah, if, if you can't adjust it out, then that's probably what he should try to, to go ahead and rebuild that area. Absolutely, Tim. So I'm going to go ahead and put up this. Now, Tim, I, this is from Bob Roberts' page on the G07. Okay. So this way you can actually see the width coil. You can see it back there. And you can actually see the width the width caps there. You mm -hmm. see those polypropylene caps, those little blue caps right next to it there, Tim? Right. So you can actually see, that's what, if, when we talk about width kits, guys, that's what we're talking about replacing are those are those ones right next to the width coil there. Uh, Tim always, I always say it for him because he always gets a little confused, the polypropylene caps. Yeah. Or chiclet caps, I think, Tim, is what you yeah, like to say chiclets. a lot of times. So, but many monitors do not have a horizontal width um, potentiometer to easily adjust this attribute. You can try adjusting the horizontal frequency sync, but those don't always get the job done, right, Tim? Or yep. the centering, like you were mentioning with the uh, with the adjustments there. In this case, try adjusting the horizontal width coil with a TV alignment tool to see if it helps. Tim, we talked about this a lot. Don't use an Allen wrench. Right. <laughs> okay, Allen wrenches will heat up, and it'll be very hot, and you can damage the coil. TV alignment tool. They're plastic, non-conductive, so if you accidentally touch something you're not supposed to touch, you don't have to worry about it as much. Again, horizontal or TV alignment tool on the horizontal width coil. Very important. You can also try installing a horizontal width kit, like we talked about, Tim. So the blue, you know, like I said, if you're looking at the width coil in the upper right-hand corner of our picture there, the width kit would be replacing those polypropylene capacitors that are right next to the width coil. Okay, so you can get a new width kit for your GO7 or whatever monitor you have and try that as well. It is also important to make sure that your B plus voltage is correct, as incorrect voltage can cause picture size issues. We've seen this before. If your B plus is too high or too low, sometimes it can mess with your picture. So make yeah. sure it's dialed in to where it's supposed to be. If it's a GO7, you'll see here it says um, 120 volts DC, Tim. You'll see that actually right underneath where it says B plus adjustment. So, but whatever monitor you have, make sure that is dialed in. Tim, do you have anything else for Bill before we move on? No, that, just the fact that it would help if he let us know what kind of monitor or send us a picture of it. We'll I did us. the GO7 just because it's so common, Tim, it's and, very those, common. and so I was like, I'm just going to throw that up there. Plus, we had some nice labels and things, so uh, we'll just throw that up there and, and show that. But uh, again, guys, hopefully it answers Bill's question. Good luck getting the horizontal size adjusted on your Miss Pac-Man arcade monitor. Okay, Tim, let's see. Uh, Joe Holt says, love this show. Bring back the TV monitor guy by Zoom call or something. Michael, yes. Uh, guys, uh, we're still very much in contact with Michael. He is busy, Tim. Um, yeah. A lot of you guys don't know, he he's traveling all around the country for work. Um, and so getting him on, like to get him live would be very difficult for us, I think. But to have him do a video or something like that, um, we've sent questions to him in the past and he's, you know, he's done... I actually think I may have sent him something this month. I don't know if he sent it back. He okay. may have. But, um, you know, last month we had the question with the rainbow colored screen. Michael chimed in on that. Uh -huh. I sent him that question. He sent back his reply. So Michael's very much still involved in all of this. And we miss him greatly, Tim. I wish I wish we were all together in the same room again. Um, the only thing is, is that whenever Tim and Michael and me are in the same room, um, there's too much laughing going on and very little recording, it seems yeah. like. So <laughs> most of the times we're just laughing half the time. Um, Michael, I know he comes off super serious, Tim, but... If you've seen any of the blooper videos yeah. with him, you'll find out very quickly. He has a way of just saying these quips right. that'll get you just right off focus. So um, we miss Michael terribly. We want him to come back. And hopefully at some point we can all be together in the same room or we can have a Zoom call with him or something like that. But Michael, I know you're probably listening and watching to this, even if it's after the fact. Uh, love you, buddy. And uh, hopefully we can do something, you know interactive with you soon. The fans yeah, are calling for that's you. That's right, Mike. exactly. They're actually calling for you. So uh, let's see. Uh, YouTube Punk, was it Mike, the CRT guy? Uh, Paul says Randy Fromm. So um, Ryan says, where are you guys out of? We are out of Texas. And YouTube Punk actually uh, chimed in there. We are right. out of Texas. So we are here. Uh, we are east of Dallas area. Right. So, um, But we were still affected by the Dallas area, Tim. The Dallas area recently had a little um, ice, ice storm. storm for a couple of days and some of Tim's presents, which we're going to open here in a bit, just got here today because of that. All right. So mm -hmm. I had ordered them a week and a half ago, one thing in particular, and it was supposed to be here like three days ago, but because of that ice storm, Tim, it got delayed. Literally came hours before the show. So that's always great though, Tim. But everything came together. Yeah. You know, I love it when a plan it comes together. So <laughs> right. there you go. So we'll be opening those 
right after our quick question and answer round, Tim. Well, let's get going. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, put this up on the screen, guys. Now, for those of you guys who may not, who may be new to this, this is our quick question and answer portion of the show where I throw Tim three questions rapid fire, and then he comes back with three answers for those three questions. So this month we have three more questions, and the first one is from Carrie. Carrie says, I have a Wells Garner D9200. The pick is only about four inches wide, but full length. Any right. suggestions? Okay, so four inches wide, right. full length, a little bit of vertical collapse happening, something like that. Ryan says, how hard is it to change the screen on an old 80s Greyhound poker machine? Okay. Okay, so I assume he wants to go CRT to LCD, sure. something like that. <clears throat> and Thunder Road says, I have a golden tee that was playing when the screen went blank, and it had a smoke smell. Tim, I don't know why all these games are spontaneously there, right? <laughs> combusting, but apparently we're getting a lot of smoke lately. I turned it off. Plugged it in. I could still hear the game, or unplugged it. I can still hear the game playing when I turned it off. What would a repair like this cost? So Tim, we're talking about playing blind here. Okay. What would a playing blind repair cost? So let's okay. go to Kerry first. Okay. We've got a Wells Garner D9200 with a little bit of vertical collapse. Tim, not all the way. Still got four right. inches, but it's starting to collapse on us. What's going on with Kerry's D9200 Wells Garner monitor? Well, that's exactly what's happening. The vertical is collapsing, and he needs to do a cap kit. And also check resistors. Uh, we are 312 or 314 and IC403, especially that I, IC. Uh, that can, yeah, 403 can definitely cause that issue. Yeah, and all that, Tim, comes from the Wells Garner D9200 repair guy, correct? Right. I remember that. So there's a, and I think we linked to it down below, Carrie, so check that out. Okay, so Ryan wants to replace the monitor in his old Greyhound poker machine. Yeah. What would he do to, to accomplish that? Well, it's real simple. I mean, pretty much the same process you would for an arcade game. Uh, you could either, but you could rebuild that chassis. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be an option one. Uh, or you're going to replace it with something newer like an LCD screen. And we've got some videos on that and everything that should help you. But you may have to get, um, if you don't, you make sure to get a, arcade commercial quality lcd not just something at walmart or something absolutely tim and then we had thunder road playing blind tim what is going to cost to get my golden tee fixed as playing blind well uh the price of everything just like has gone up uh so we're probably looking at by the time if you can take the chassis out get it ready ship it and have it repaired and do that part yourself uh, if somebody doesn't have to come to your house uh then you're probably talking looking to between two hundred dollars and maybe 300 to repair a monitor that's playing blind because it could be uh, like in our video that we show it could be something simple and may cost a little less than that but it could be a multitude of things or the whole chassis needs new flyback new this new that so it could run run up that higher range um, but our good friend Paul is in the chat room and I'm sure that if you would email him he would quote you a good price Okay, and actually, he has he says one ten to one fifty for the repair. So if there you, you want if you want to repair, send it to Paul because that's a lot cheaper than a lot of places will do it. And Paul does really good work. So I agree. Uh, we we appreciate his reasonable prices, Tim. Yes, I do. <laughs> so that's for sure. So guys, let's go ahead and throw out the outline scene here for all the stuff that Tim mentioned. So Carrie with the D ninety two hundred, it is experiencing vertical collapse. Try a cap kit and check resistors R three twelve, R three fourteen, and that IC at IC four hundred three. Okay, and you can see the D9200 repair guide, Tim, that was put out by Wells Gardner themselves. It has a lot of great information on how to fix pretty much any kind of problems with the D9200. And we should have a link below for that, Carrie. Um, but if you do those things, hopefully that'll get you back up and running. Uh, Ryan, of course, it's not too hard to replace the monitor in your Greyhound arcade priest or Greyhound poker machine. Uh -huh. Pretty similar to a regular screen replacement in arcade. Just be sure to get a commercial grade arcade quality LCD that supports your resolution. So um, if you're if you're using CGA, if your poker machine is still using CGA 15 kilohertz resolution, then make sure that you get a monitor that supports that. And it should be pretty plug and play, right, Tim? Yes, if you get the right monitor that has that connector right exactly so i mean and you'll see if it says cga compatibility um cga ega vga is typically what we see with like a tri sync tri res um those will typically support that and so it'll be pretty much just a you know drop in kind of kind of repair you may have to rewire the input connector but that'd be it right tim yep so and then thunder road probably looking around 200 to 350 to repair the monitor that's playing blind depending on make and model and the parts that are needed. Contact Monitor Repair Techs on our resources page for pricing. Contact Paul Jaray because apparently he'll, <laughs> he'll he'll do it for 110 to 150, um, which is a lot cheaper than what we've seen at other places, Tim. And um, and Paul is very good, does a lot of repairs for a lot of people. Um, we didn't 
I did an interview with Paul in the episode one of our interviews podcast, Tim, if you want to hear a little bit more about his background. Mm -hmm. But Paul, we're glad you're here and we're glad that you are so reasonable on your repair rates. So yes, um, thank I, you, Paul. So it's very nice for that. Very nice. So um, Tim, I think that covers all of our quick question and answers. Do you have any more thoughts nope. on any of these before we move on? Nope. Or open the presents. Huh? See, he's ready to get the right. presents, guys, but I'm going to go to the live chat real live quick. Chat. So... Uh, let's see. You guys have an email from Ryan that I can send you pics of the problem I'm having. Uh, yeah. Yes, go to questions at arcaderepairtips.com. Questions at arcaderepairtips.com if you want to email us. Uh, let's see. Um, Joe Holt says adapter board. And I think he may have been talking about the um, the, the Greyhound. Yes. So replacing the monitor. So you can go that route. We just don't like the adapter boards. We would rather that be built into the monitor. But you could go with the... With the Gombas 8200, Tim, uh, GBS 8200, and an off-the-shelf monitor. But guys, it just doesn't last as long in our in our, in our our experience. And plus, you have to turn on the monitor, which is right. a big bummer. So, I mean, we like to go with commercial-grade arcade quality LCDs. They're more expensive, but yes. they work better. So, I, I mean, so it just depends. If you're fine turning on and off your monitor and using the adapter board, more power to you. Uh, let's see. So a small TV would not work. It would only work. A small TV would only work if with it supports the, the resolution, right? right. So if it if it um, if it worked with the resolution of the Greyhound. So most video poker and arcade machines, Tim, use standard resolution, which is a 15 kilohertz signal. And so an off-the-shelf TV does not support 15 kilohertz. You may be able to mod it to do that, but off the shelf it does not, which means you would need a video converter board in order to do that. And so that that's the downside of taking one off the shelf, is that you'll probably need a video converter board. Uh, whereas an arcade quality commercial grade LCD, you can find one that automatically supports that. Uh, Tim, we have a lot of them uh, mm -hmm. that we've used in the past. Wells Garner makes some. Um, the Game Pro ones, Tim, are very good. Um, all sorts of different ones. So there's a lot of different brands out there, good stuff. Uh, let's see. Um, Matty Mo's Arcade, he says he doesn't charge too much. I don't know what too much is, Matty Mo, but let us know. Okay. So, and if you guys haven't checked out Matty Mo's videos, you should. Right. So, uh, Tim, we support Matty Mo. We do. He's yeah, so super we're actually, we're, I'm actually a Patreon supporter of his, just I, to let you know. Yeah. We give you money. So, because we love his videos so much. I follow Matty Mo on Instagram. I don't think I follow but five people. There you go. See, you I guys need to check I out his videos. One. Just so for when his videos pop up. Right, exactly. Uh, Rexer shows here. He says, guys, I bought another Donkey Kong machine, but it's playing blind and it's not the CRT. Do you have any vids on repairing boards playing blind? Well, here's the thing. We don't. Um, no. We do have inspecting an arcade board, which is basically the closest thing we get to arcade uh, board repair. Nice thing about Donkey Kong is there is a lot of information out there. Um, but if you're, ha obviously, if it's a video problem, there's something in the video circuit that's having some issues on the board. And so that's where you want to start, kind of trace back from the input wires uh, on the harness side and then just kind of go back through there. Um, there's a lot of information out there, thankfully, about... Like I said, Donkey Kong boards. And so we can help you troubleshoot that a little bit just with some of that stuff. Um, Mike's Arcade, I think I've talked to you before, Razor Show. Great resource for Donkey Kong and Nintendo information. Golly. So if you can get in touch with Mike, he may be able to lead you down a better path as well. Um, but it really depends on what board set you have, too. Board sets make a difference with Donkey yeah. Kong, Tim. So, uh, But, uh, again, send the question in. We can help you troubleshoot it. So uh, Let's see. <laughs> Paul says, maybe I should raise my rates. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, I, does your 110 to 150, does that include shipping back? Right. That would be my question. I mean, because I, when I was thinking 200, I was thinking with the shipping. Yeah. With the shipping, like, I would have to pay to ship it to you, and then you'd have to pay to ship it back. So if you're charging 150 plus shipping back to me, plus I have to ship it back to you, that's that's 200 something right there, right, Tim? Probably so. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, um, so there you go, Paul. So, I mean, you know, just let me know. I mean, let us know. I'm, I'm curious about that. So, okay. Tim, are you ready? I'm ready. Hang on, we got another question. <laughs> <laughs> who keeps asking questions? All right. No, 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 no. Seriously. All uh, right. What's the Joe question? says, who I'm has the ready. high score on Galaga and what is it? So um, between me and Tim, my high score on Galaga oh, is a little over a hundred thousand, um, which is not very good. <laughs> um, no, upper hundred thousand. You've come close. I, I've gotten over a hundred. Yeah. Why um, over? Maybe a hundred and twenty is probably my oh. high, high, high. Um, we had Jordan Dorrington on the interviews podcast, Tim, uh -huh. who's got. He's, he's got either the first or second top score. If you want to talk about Galaga scores, you need to talk to that guy or go back and listen to that interviews podcast because, man, that guy can play. Yeah. Um, last I talked to him, he was trying to get the high score on Donkey Kong. I don't know how that's going, Tim. But, um, yeah, so Jordan Dorrington, there's a Galaga group on Facebook that he started along with some of the other guys. And uh, it's a great, great place to go if you want to play 
uh, with all that. But uh, yeah. Oh, Paul says twenty dollars for shipping. So if it's a one fifty for the repair, twenty dollars for shipping. Plus Paul's I got cheaper. plus I got it. Plus I got to ship it to you for twenty dollars. That's a hundred and ninety. So that's close to the two hundred. Right. I'm hey. saving ten dollars and sending it to Paul. There you go. Hey, I already put the things up there, so you kind of know what it is. But anyway, okay. I didn't see. Him. We're gonna we're gonna let Tim open his. Hang on. <laughs> no more questions, right? No. Okay, I think we're good. Okay. Okay, we're gonna let Tim open his birthday presents for me. Well, I'll take this top one then. Okay, so that's got two top. in it, so be careful. Okay. Oh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Tim. Happy birthday to you. Okay. That's public domain now, right? Okay. Where's my cake? I'm pretty sure. Sorry, I didn't get All you right. a cake. Well, this looks like a shirt. You said two? Yeah, there's two in there. Oh, okay. Okay. So here's what we got. So you want to hold it up for the people? Okay. I got some tickets. So this is a laminated ticket book That's bookmarked, cool. Tim. And this is YouTube Punk makes these. Jason. Okay. okay. And so this is what he does is he takes arcade tickets, guys, and he laminates them. Okay. So That's what he did cool. with this is he laminated. I bought you Chuck E. Cheese ones. Okay. You know, for obvious reasons. And so you can use this as a bookmark in your Randy Fromm guides or your yeah. arcade books or whatever like that. So uh, you want to hold it up to the people here? Well, what's cool is these are going away. Yes, and correct. So this is, you know. It's a good way to preserve a some collectible history. and a. Uh, yeah, it's like a bookmark, but I'll probably just hang it on the wall or something. I no, you should use it as a bookmark or something. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So that, so that, so uh, YouTube Punk actually did that. So, and of course he got oh, a thank shirt. You. So now I ordered it from him. So, oh, um, but, okay. but I wanted to support him. So all the links for all this stuff, guys, are down below. So if you want to order any of what Tim got, you can. Uh, I don't think there's any ads on any of this stuff. So. Okay. Okay. You want to show me your shirt? Hold that. Yeah. <laughs> I can hold this up. Let's see go. what the shirt says. Original Gamer. Okay. Yep. That's me. There you go. So it's kind of generic, but, you know, I just had to get you a shirt, Tim. One button. So, exactly. You have to get one, at least one shirt, yeah. so. All right. Now, this is heavy, so this has really got my curiosity up. Yeah, I was about to say, I already put the because, slide up, so uh, he knows what it is. I didn't, I didn't look. Oh, yes. I didn't look. look. So there's two in this one, too. Ah, yay. Can always use one of these. So there's something attached to the front of it there that you wanted. So that's not the front. Okay. Oh well, thank you. There you go. Awesome. So tell the tell the fine people out in uh, out in the on the internet. Uh, what well, you got. Jonathan asked, and this is what I I requested because I'm trying to buy a tool. Thank you, John. This will put me right in the range where with some other. Uh, my wife got me one too, so I can get a tool that I need. And then this is really cool. You can't have too many of these guys. This is a mechanics roll around set. And uh, so it has the tray in the bottom and stuff where you can sit down and work on games and keep your tools and stuff down so there. So we, when we did the Holland Computers video, we actually got the stu we got to keep the stools, like I said, because they provide uh -huh. them for free. But this, those stools don't have part holders on the bottom. Right. And Tim has a stool that has a part holder on it, but the pneumatic is broken. Yes. <laughs> so when you sit on it, it goes whoop. Yeah, it hits the ground. And so you really need to fast. throw that one away yeah, yeah. and put this one okay. in its place. I agree. This this one doesn't change, so it just sits still. Correct. It is it, it is very it just sits still. Oh, we posted these guys. They were on sale at Northern Tool recently uh, for a really great price, and so I bought one for Tim, knowing that you know he would uh, he would enjoy it. So there I you go. will definitely will. Well, wow, what a birthday, John! You always come up with some creative and. Thoughtful and then useful gifts. So, so throw away I that old stool, it. please. So next time I come <laughs> yeah. over, I'm not like I'm not I'm not sinking. It's had its days, right? It's, yeah, it's, that thing has been. I, I guess you can't throw it away because it's, it's been it's in letter, a few videos. It's been in a few videos. If you guys have seen the red <laughs> stool, um, I know it was in the checking a power supply video. It's in. Um, let's see what else. Um, I think adjusting a coin mech video. That, it, that red stool has been in there. It has been around the block a few times. But so. every time I sit on that thing, Tim, it, it, it goes room. Yeah. So you guys know what I'm talking about, the pneumatic little heart breaks and all of a sudden you're, you know, you're, you know, you're sitting like, you're sitting literally like three feet lower, it feels like, than what you were like three minutes ago. So anyway, happy birthday, Tim. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank so you. So I'm glad. And so like, yeah, so this, like I that said, so really YouTube cool. Punk, I Jason. I was not expecting that. Yeah. So this, um, he started making these, Tim, and I was like, well, I should get Tim some for his birthday because I think they look cool. And so I ordered me a Dave and Buster's. Oh, and I ordered okay. you, I ordered you um, the uh, Chuck E. Cheese. And so I don't know how much long, longer you're going to be able to get tickets as a whole, but you can use them to mark your um, your arcade repair literature or right. arcade repair books or magazines or whatever. So, you know, but uh, Tim, it can always remind you of of, uh, of a place that you used to work. This is actually the older Chucky, too. He's the yes. heavier Chucky. 
So these are not the even the latest tickets that would have been out in the last few years. These are they don't I don't know if they have a year date on them, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know if the copyright is on. I don't see the copyright. It says national ticket though. Is that where you guys used to get it yeah. from? So national ticket maybe on the back. I'll have to check the small print. Yeah, very I mean, small. They, it really is very small. small. Oh man. But anyway. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, national Rachel, ticket. For those. I see national ticket, but I don't see anything in that phone number. But yes, All right. I want to get you. Like he gave me some options. I That's like those really the best. Cool. So. Yeah, and it kind of reminded me. It kind of reminded me of um, when we used to. Oh yeah. Go up there, play with Tim sometimes. So. Yeah, we have. I've been through uh, field a lot of tickets in my day. So. That's right. So here's what Tim got, and all the links are down below. We don't get any ad revenue on any of this stuff. Okay. So, uh, but he got the original gamer shirt from Old Navy, which I actually like. I thought, I I thought do it was too. Cool. That's a cool I was wearing shirt. some other stuff from Old Navy. I threw it on there. Okay. Um, let's see. He got the Iron Ton uh, shop stool from Northern Tool and Equipment, which was on sale. If you guys, yeah, we tweeted that out. We sent that out. It was a really good price, Tim, um, and just couldn't pass it up. We got the Home Depot gift card uh -huh. from Home Depot, of course. And then we've got a arcade ticket bookmark from our pal Jason. So, uh, and all of these links are down below. So if you guys want to order any of what Tim got, uh, unfortunately the stool is no longer on sale. So you're okay. going to be paying full price for it. But Tim, even regular price is not bad on it. Uh, I ordered me another one too. Because I have one like that already, uh -huh. but I ordered another one. Because they're just so handy to have around. Like you said, you really want a place to put your parts on your stool. And the ones we got from Holland, uh, Tim, they're more for playing the cocktail cabinet. Yeah, for they're settings, not for, still, right, for They're not, not for working. You need to be able to roll around. At my age especially, you don't have to get up and down. You know, you can right. just kind of roll over there and do something but and we roll put, back. I mean, we will fill up the bottom of the those stools okay. with tools tim yeah. and so like just you know in fact tim i think that red stool makes an appearance in in the new video okay <laughs> so i mean tim was sitting on it at one point so yeah. the old the old busted stool so <laughs> I, I may not be able to get away from him guys he may continue to keep it just for sentimental reasons i think you should sell it on ebay and say this right. was this was used in arcade or part of videos. part of history there if anybody wants it i'll <laughs> pay shipping and we'll send it to you there you go <laughs> so let's see what we got here um I was gonna see what people said about your things, uh, but that's a good reason, yeah, a good point, John, that people should follow us on Twitter because you guys, you and Mark both will post good deals. You, you're always been a, a great online shopper, John. You're always coming across good deals on meters and things like that. So, guys, if you're not following us on Twitter or on our Facebook page, uh, I think you should look into those because they post those things, and sometimes they go really quick. So. It's a, there are always some good deals and whatever, whatever tools we feel like we use that uh, maybe it'd be something that you would like. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I, Tim, that was, that was a great deal on that stool and I hope yeah. all you guys were able to get them uh, because they are super handy to have around when you're working on games. Cause Tim, like when you're sitting in the back of a game, I hate to, I don't want to have to get into it that much. And if I'm sitting at cabinet level, I can do a lot of stuff there without having to, without having to get inside the cabinet. I can replace the board. Right. I can, I can do a lot. And so that, that still is at a nice level for that. Yeah. And these, ha it has the clips on the back of, we can attach a light right, or a flashlight will stick metal to it or something that, uh, you know, is magnetized. I got some tools that will go onto that too. Right. So that'll make it real handy. So, like I said, Holland Computers is nice enough to send the, their cocktail stools, which are great stools, but they're made for playing a cocktail cabinet. They're not made for repair. And so I want to get Tim something that was made for repair. But anyway. Awesome. So Joe says, happy birthday. Thank you. So there we go. There you go. Happy birthday, Tim. Appreciate it. So, Man, what a birthday. There you go. So, okay, um, let us move on with some news and things. Now, Tim, I saw this, and some of you guys who are on you know, Twitter and uh, Facebook have already seen this, mm -hmm. but I was watching a game show on Game Show Network called America Says, Tim, and um, the way you do this is by playing fill-in-the-blank, and so I wanted to throw this up here for the live show for those of you guys who haven't seen it. And um, so, basically, the question was, a video game I remember playing in the arcade growing up okay. is... So Tim, let's see. If, right. now, have you already seen this? I, haven't, I saw the post, but I have. I didn't really haven't played this. So it's the first one, Street Fighter. Street Fighter is correct. Uh, looks like Space Invaders. Space Invaders is correct. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong is correct. It's got to be Pac Man. Pac Man is correct. Uh, the T is probably Tron. I'm betting T that, is not Tron. Oh, well, I would bet Tron. Okay. Uh, F Frogger. Frogger. And the C Centipede. Centipede is correct. So you missed one. Okay, so you missed T Tron. would have you to try be. Again. What else would be with a T? It looks like it's short. I'm a, it appearing short. that that means not very many letters. A lot of people guess Tron when I put this up, Tim, but Tron is not the correct answer according to the America. So, okay. Uh, any other ideas? Raised. Any other T ones? 
T. Let's see, man. This is this is stumping me right now because it looks like Tron to me. That's it looks like it Tron. I'm with that's you. what Tron would be. Um, Tron no, was my guess too. Okay, what what is it then? I don't know. Okay, Tetris. Oh, of course. So here's the answers, guys. So Tim got them all right except for the Tetris, of course. Tetris. Street Fighter, Space Invaders, Donkey Kong, Pac Man, Centipede, Frogger, and Tetris. Yeah, who got Tetris in the group? Um, you know, it took people. I, most people guessed Tron That's when we were doing like when we were doing it on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Tim, Tron definitely seems like it would have been the one to put there. So I mean, but again, you're asking random people in a mall or whatever it is, and so Tetris. You know, um, I think you know Tim. When I think about it, a lot of the arcades I went to growing up had a Tetris. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it was the first game. Like again, Tron would have been the very first thing that that popped into my mind, Tim. But um, but I do remember several Tetris arcade games. I mean, I you know, do. we go to um, Putt Putt Golfing Games here in town, Tim, and uh, they have a Tetris. Right. And they don't have a Tron. Right. So there's a lot of arcades that still have Tetris out. So I, I mean, I understand that. that. But I did and think Tetris it was interesting. Tetris was a worldwide hit too. It was in a lot of. European countries and things had Tetris. Absolutely. So there you go. But I thought that was fun. We put that up on uh, Facebook and Twitter and we just had you guys answer. And so uh, just really cool stuff. So um, just wanted to have fun, Tim. Mm -hmm. And somebody put, I uh, thought, Tempest. On Tempest the, on, uh, would have been a yeah, good Yeah, Tempest would have been a good one on the T. Um, there's a lot of other T, I was trying to think of other T arcade games probably that we could put there from classic. Growing up is the key word there, Tim. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, I went Tron. Like yeah. when that came up, I immediately I said Tron. Tron. So it looked short, so I thought it's got to be Tron. Exactly, but there you go. Tetris is more remembered, Tim. And uh, <laughs> so I said, I like Clax over Tetris. You know, Clax seems like it would have been more memorable. I think of Clax as an arcade game, although it had uh -huh. several home ports. So, okay, Tim, let's go to some of the news for this month. And Tim, the Mame team celebrates the 25th anniversary of the Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. Of course, wow. Tim, it's not called Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator more. It's just Mame. <laughs> right. But um, it is 25 years. So the Mame project was started on December 24th, 1996, by Italian programmer Nicola uh, Salmoria. It began. It began as a project called Multipack. Intended to preserve games in the Pac-Man family, but the name was changed as more games were added to its framework. The first version of the emulator, MAME 0.1, was released on February 5th, 1997. Today, the MAME project is supported by hundreds of developers around the world and thousands of outside contributors. We want to thank the MAME team and all of these developers, contributors, for their outstanding work. Tim, um, MAME was the thing that brought you and me together. Yep, sure was. So um, when I met Tim in 2001... Um, I asked him, I asked him like the very first time if he had ever heard of MAME and he said he had heard of it, but he didn't know much about it. And at that point I had already been doing some emulation with arcade games and things, trying it out. And so, uh, the very first project that we really did, I mean, the, the one that we, the one that we had agreed to work on was a MAME machine. And of course we started Tim's MAME machine website that eventually turned into Tim's arcade restoration that eventually turned into Barcade Entertainment <laughs> that eventually turned into... <laughs> Arcade repair tips. Yeah, where we are now. So, um, so Mame uh, has a soft, a soft spot in our hearts, Tim. I guess you could say. What we, version do you think we were running the first one? Probably in the threes. Mame. So point like oh, uh, zero point three, three? five okay. or so, something like that. I um, remember it was a lot of disc at first too. Yeah, you know, like a lot. Yeah, uh, things. I mean, it's, man, it's a lot now. Yeah. Um, like to get an entire Mame package now, it's gigs and gigs and gigs. I mean, the best way to do it is to get like a hard drive already. Yeah. Loaded. Exactly, with everything loaded on it. But, uh, yeah, so Mayhem is celebrating its 25th anniversary, which, Tim, just makes me feel old. Yes. So, I mean, that's what it comes down to. <laughs> Very old. But, but, golly, what an amazing piece piece of software. I right. mean, the what it does, guys, is amazing. And I know now we're going with FPGA, and we've got these things that actually that actually emulate the actual hardware instead of software emulate it. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing what MAME is able to accomplish and what it's been able to accomplish. And it's all because there's so many people who have devoted extreme amounts of time tim we cannot fathom how many man hours have been spent trying to emulate arcade games but um it's all thanks to all of these developers and contributors guys without y'all there would be no emulation there'd be no mame and uh we just want to thank all those guys because i mean that's amazing it's amazing to me and um the mame team has liked every every uh, post that we put out there about them so right. um thank you for that too but you mm -hmm. guys are the ones we should be thanking because man uh, mame is is quite an accomplishment and i can't think of another piece of software, Tim, that's as important or that is as important to documenting the history of arcade games than MAME is. I mean, literally, it is the hardware document docu documentation of 
all sorts of arcade games. And without it, who knows if these things would be totally lost. You right. know what I'm saying? So um, thank you guys so much for all of the work you guys, everybody has put into it who's ever contributed to it. It's awesome. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, I'm looking here. I, oh, let's see. Uh, Joe says, Tetris is an odd game. It's more of a play on old phone game. The doc documentary is awesome. I did see the documentary mm -hmm. on Tetris. Did you see that? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Tetris the Grandmaster Plus 2. There are there are several different arcade versions of Tetris, besides the one that everybody knows, the, the like Atari version, right? Right. So there's more out there. The original Atari Tetris. Um, let's see. I heard Billy likes Maine, Paul Geray. <laughs> <laughs> We've That's heard funny. that too. Um, first name I got was around summer of 1997. Wow. Um, let's see. I love it when you're about to buy a game and you can test it on Maine before you decide to buy it. Yes, and this is probably yes. one of the things that's led us to several games. I don't know if we would be as big a Kix fans if it wasn't for Maine. I don't not. know if we'd be as big a fans of Wizard of War if it wasn't for Maine. Right. I mean, there's several games that um, we played on Tim's Maine machine when we built yeah. it that later on we ended up either buying or um, or working on just because you know we loved them so much in Maine. And so, yes, it's definitely, like I said, I mean, in that way, it has exposed us to so many games we probably would have never been exposed to otherwise. So, I agree. Good stuff. Okay, Tim, let us move on here. Now, Tim, this is more of a console news thing, but I want to put it up here because it's just something so rare that never happens. Hundreds of rare sealed Nintendo and Sega games discovered in a Nebraska storage facility. A video game reseller in Nebraska called Game Room has discovered hordes of new sealed Super Nintendo, Sega CD, Genesis, Saturn, and 3DO games in a warehouse. The games were put in storage after a local store closed down in 1994 and have remained untouched until now. The staff joked in a video that there are as many copies of the less valuable NBA and Madden games as there are interesting finds, but the several boxes of incredibly rare games more than make up for it. Tim, they found a time capsule. Wow. Basically, of rare games in Nebraska. That's um, cool. And here's the thing. These sealed games, Tim, I don't know if you've seen what games are going for oh, recently. Oh, crazy. But it is yeah, crazy. crazy. Like, console games that are sealed are going for outrageous prices. And so these guys, who knows how much money they're, they're going to have in these new sealed games. Tim, even sealed copies of Madden, while they're still cheap, they still they still go for a decent price if they're sealed. Because mm -hmm. sealed, obviously, is something we don't see a lot of anymore. Especially when it comes to games from the 90s. So these guys are going to, uh, they're going to end up making a ton of money, I'm sure. Uh, and so I just think it's interesting, Tim, that they put this video up showing all these things that they found. And golly, Tim, it is it is quite the, um, the find. Unbelievable, so, yeah. So, I mean, I just want to throw that up there just because I, I thought it was super interesting. Um, and um, I, I have no idea. I'm sure you're going to see some of the stuff being listed pretty soon, Tim, like on eBay or other places. I'm sure they're going to probably get it graded mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, or they may auction it off at auction houses. Who knows? But um, golly, what a find. What that a find. is cool. So, like I said, they basically found a, um, they basically, a, basically time, found a time capsule. Yeah. Uh, YouTube Punk says, new sealed old stock. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, new old stock, Tim. Man, yeah. you don't see anything new old stock anymore. NOS, man. You see NOS stuff all the time. Right. You hardly ever do. Exactly. Now, Tim, Street Fighter Six is coming out. All right. Have you not played the last three? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Street Fighter Six, they did announce it. So, in a short teaser trailer. So, Capcom has announced that they are working on Street Fighter Six, and will reveal more information about it this summer. The short teaser trailer contains a scene depicting a fight between fan favorite Rue and recent Street Fighter V edition Luke. A Capcom data leak in 2020 suggests that Street Fighter VI was scheduled for release in the third quarter of 2022, although plans may have changed since then. And this was a question I posed on, on Facebook and Twitter. Does the Street Fighter series still interest you after all this time? What was the last Street Fighter game you spent significant time playing? So, Tim, I'll pose that to you. Okay. Does the Street Fighter series still interest you at all? Um, not much. Yeah. No. No, not it's just very not, little. yeah, exactly. Like fighting games are never really your thing anyway. No, it was kind of your more your generation, John. Um, but uh, I will say, out of all the fighting games, I probably played the most Street Fighter. And uh, the answer to that second question, the last Street Fighter game I played, significant time playing was probably Street Fighter Two. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, the last Street Fighter game I put significant time into is probably Street Fighter Four. Okay. I bought it when it came out, um, the limited edition at the time. Of course, now, Tim, they've had like 15 other editions since then of Street Fighter right. 4. Um, I didn't play a lot of Street Fighter 5, Tim, because pretty much it, I think it was only PC and PlayStation, and I'm an Xbox guy. So um, I just didn't I didn't buy it. I probably would have bought a copy if it was on Xbox. But um, 
But yeah, I played a lot of Street Fighter 4. I actually like Street Fighter 4 quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, Street Fighter 5, I really didn't play. So I don't know what's going to happen with Street Fighter 6. If it comes out on Xbox, I'll probably end up playing it. But, uh, you know, Tim, I mean, all these fighting game franchises are still around. Mortal Kombat's so. still around. You know, Tekken's still around. Street Fighter's still around. I, I do feel like the audiences have gotten a little bit more hardcore, though, as as the games have gone on. And so it's hard, I think, now for beginners to get into these games who haven't mm -hmm. ne didn't necessarily grow up with them. Um, it seems like we're making them more complicated all the time. So uh, let's see. Um, YouTube Punk says Street Fighter 2 was okay. the one that he did. Um, let's see. Um, Star Minor Arcade, I prefer, um, uh, I prefer uh, maybe 3D fighters like Tekken. So uh -huh. I like Tekken too. I was a, I'm a huge Tekken fan. Uh, Tim, you see my fighting games. For those of you guys who can't uh -huh. see this wall over here and they're covered up with stuff. Anyway, uh -huh. I got Street Fighter 2. I got Mortal Kombat 2. I got a Marvel vs. Capcom and a Tekken Tag Tournament. And those four games are probably my favorite four fighting games ever. Uh -huh. So Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat 2, Marvel vs. Capcom, and Tekken Tag Tournament. Tekken Tag Tournament is my favorite of the Tekkens. Really? Um, I, I mean, I played Tekken 4, played Tekken 5. I played all the Tekkens, but Tekken Tag, the original Tekken Tag Tournament is my favorite. It's fast. Um, the tag mechanic works great in it. It just plays well. Uh, let's see. Um, YouTube Punk says Street Fighter, the movie, the game. So if you remember that one, Tim. Right. Yeah, so he's got that. Um, he also said, uh, let's see, he also says Tekken 3 and Tag are my jam. Uh, Paul says Street Fighter 2 New Challengers is my favorite. So um, let's see. Uh, Sarah Mine Arcade, I'm restoring an old um, Street Fighter 2 Turbo once I fix the monitor and get the power supply. So uh, Joe says Double Dragon. So there you okay, go. Okay, Double Dragon. Yeah, so um, yeah. I, I love Marvel vs. Capcom. I love the Versus series. <clears throat> Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is obviously the pinnacle of that, Tim. Um, I like Marvel vs. Capcom 1 better just because it's mm. what I remember growing up with in the arcade. Okay. I love 2, too. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But I mean, between the two, I'm actually a Marvel vs. Capcom 1 fan more than I am a 2 fan. Um, but I'll play both of them. Love to play them. So, and I like 2 because it's got more characters. That's probably the biggest thing. Yeah. But Mar the original one, hard to beat for me. Okay, Tim, now we're going to move into some pinball news overall. Okay. And I thought this would be a really good time to remind people that the Texas Pinball Festival 2022 is going to take place March 25th through 27th at the Embassy Suites Hotel and Frisco Convention Center in Frisco, Texas. It will be held in a huge 40,000 plus square foot game room. More than 400 pinball machines, classic video games, and other game room goodies will be set up on free play for everyone to enjoy the entire weekend. Leave your quarters at home. Weekend passes can be purchased for $65 if you pre-register now tim i think they've shut that down now okay. so if you haven't bought your weekend pass i think you've got to pay full price sorry about that guys so now it's 85 dollars at the door okay. okay now you can get day passes though friday it's going to be 35 dollars for adults 25 for kids saturday it's 45 for adults 35 for kids and sunday it's going to be 25 for adults and 15 for kids guys it's been two years tim they didn't have a 2020 they didn't right. have a 2021 so it's 2022 hope i'm it looks like this one's going to happen with everything the way so. it is. So I'm so glad that we're getting expos and festivals back, Tim, because I've missed them. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this one, Tim. Are you going to be able to make it? I'm going to try. It may just be like go up Saturday night and come home or might just drive up Sunday and go for the Sunday morning until that afternoon. Gotcha. Uh, so it's going to be, I'm not, definitely not going to be able to go all weekend, but I definitely will try to come up and make an appearance. You go Sunday, I might, I could... I might go with you. Okay. We'll go up early. Sunday would be fun. Yeah. So we can go up like and get there right when they open. And it's usually pretty light. Sunday morning's pretty light yeah. anyway. And so if you go up get early. Yeah, some. exactly. Sunday morning, a lot of times you get to play some stuff. So I may go up with you if you're going to do that. Because, Tim, there okay. are a couple of games that I really mm -hmm. want to play. So let's talk about one right now. And that is Multimorphic announced oh, wow. Weird Al's Museum of Natural Hilarity. Okay. okay. And this is a kit for the P3 platform. Tim, we've talked to Jerry. We talked about the P3 platform. For you guys who don't mm -hmm. know, it's a platform where you buy kits to change out the games. And so this is going to be a kit for the P3 platform. So those of you guys who have P3s, you just have to buy the kit. If right. you don't have a P3, you got to buy the P3 platform and the kit. Okay. okay. That's how it works. But Weird Al's Museum of Natural Hilarity is based on the music and career of Weird Al Yankovic. It features 17 Weird Al songs. Wow. Tim. 17. Over 2,000 custom callouts from Al himself and a software and graphics package that immerses the player into his song and lyrics, songs and lyrics. The kit will retail for 3,000. So for those of you guys who already have a P3, you can get the kit for $3,000. Okay. If you don't have a base P3, you'll have to buy that for $8,300. Okay. Which makes the total price, Tim, 
$11,300. Okay, so if you don't have a P3 already, you will have to pay $11,300 to play this game. Wow. Okay, which seems like a lot, but you got to remember, once you have the P3 platform, you can buy all the kits, and the kits are relatively cheap, Tim, between like $1,000 and $3,000, okay? So you can get Heist, which is one of the kits that they mm -hmm. released. Um, we also had Lexi Lightspeed, Tim, right. as a kit. Cosmic Kart Racing is a kit. They've got a lot of different kits. So basically, once you invest in the P3 platform, you have a lot of different kits that you can play on it, which is great. Um, and this is from their press release, Tim. We feel incredibly honored to have worked with Al and his team to develop this game, and we're excited to share it with the world. Tim, they are going to be showing it at the Texas Pinball Festival. Nice. Jerry, guys, is a fantastic guy. Um, we've had him on our show several times, Tim. Um, he's smart, and him and his team and the guys who develop these things, they work so hard. And so, you know, if you're at all interested in pinball, you should look at the P3 platform. It is now a true platform, Tim. They've got several games out. Uh, Tim, we started interviewing before they ever released anything. Right. And I can tell you from that point to now, it's amazing the amount of progress that they have done. So give, give Multimorphic and the P3 a chance to earn your business. If you're a pinball, if you want to buy a pinball machine, Tim, cause you will be surprised at the quality of their product. I think you really will. And, and just the, just the amount of fun you'll have playing with it. I mean, we played so many of their games, Tim. We really like them. Oh yeah. I mean, that's the thing. They're really it's fun. a lot of so, fun. So definitely check it out guys. And hopefully Tim, if we go to the Texas Pinball Festival, well. we'll be able to check it out too. Now, Tim, it, it looks like one pinball manufacturer, though, it's going to slow down on some of their releases. Absolutely. And by Heard one pinball stuff. manufacturer, I mean Stern. And so let's talk about Stern for a second, guys. Stern Pinball tells distributors to expect only two Cornerstone games this year will work, work towards filling existing orders. Now, uh, Mark, Tim, uh, came across this letter that uh -huh. went out to distributors of Stern Pinball games. So Stern Pinball sent out a message to distributors outlining their plans for this year. The message states that Stern Pinball will only release two Cornerstone games this year instead of the usual three. Tim, uh -huh. they have been releasing three a year. But they've had a hard time, Tim, filling orders. Um, Mark has a game pre-ordered, Tim, and he's had to wait a while for it. And I think they're saying he has to wait another year. Isn't that what he told us? Yes. So, I mean, just to give you guys an That's idea crazy. of how backed up they are. Okay. They will work towards filling many of the orders that have been made for their existing games. The message mentions that in spite of supply chain disappointments, they have been able to increase the quantity of games produced and the amount of pay they pay their labor force, which is good. Okay, right. so they're able to pay their people more and they're able to produce more games than like physically more pinball machines off the line. That's great, but it sounds like, Tim, they may be having some, they may be running into a little bit of trouble when it comes to the manufacturing, just a little bit. And so, Tim, I don't think this is a bad idea. And I think, you know, it's just them scaling back a bit. Um, you know, they've released so many games over over the last, like, two, three years, Tim. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if they need to release, keep releasing more and more and more. Yeah, I don't think so. Just to keep up with some of them that there's, the, the, if you're not meeting, if Mark's is a year behind, slow down and let's get caught up first. And then better days or better times, maybe you can go back to doing that. But exactly. So I have, I see that. Probably a smart move on their part, guys. Um, it's kind of disappointing, Tim, because we're so used to getting three releases from them a year. Mm -hmm. And so Rush, of course, is going to be the first release, Tim. Uh, they've already, you know, we've talked about that here on the show. Rush was the first one. If we're going to take Spinball Festival, hopefully we'll get to see that. But um, the second one, there's been some rumors that may be Venom. Right. I don't know that for sure. I guess we'll find out. But um, there will be a second one this year, uh, closer to August, it sounds like, Tim. So we'll find out. And that'll be their Christmas game, probably. Like probably. the one that they're marketing for Christmas. So. Now, Tim, this is the last bit of pinball news that we have. And, Tim, what is up with this? Every live show, I feel like I have to talk about somebody else that's passed away. Um, it, this is getting to be a really bummer. Yes. Uh, I mean, I it's just, it sucks. Um, I'm, you know, but uh, this time, guys, it's uh, Barry Ausler. And, Tim, um, I had a chance to meet him. Yes. I went to the first uh, Southern Fried Game Room Expo in Georgia. And um, he was there. And mm -hmm. I got to talk to him. Uh, he did one of my favorite games. He designed one of my favorite games, Tim. Who done it? Yes. And Who Done It is one of my favorite games. I know it can be a uh, it can be really hard to keep it running because uh -huh. it's got the real mechanism in the underneath, but I love playing that game. I'm a big murder mystery kind of guy and that uh -huh. theme just hits me right. And so he did that game and to me that I love that game so much. But I told him that when I got to meet him, Tim, and so uh -huh. I it, we got to talk a little bit. He was a very nice guy, very quiet, okay, uh -huh. very reserved, but very nice. Um, but he was he was understood to have been undergoing treatment for cancer uh -huh. and died because of complications. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, you know, guys, cancer sucks. No other way to say it. Um, 
Tim, you know, people don't realize, I don't think how much cancer affects everybody and how much of an epidemic it is. But pretty much if you, if you ask most people, somebody knows somebody who died of cancer. Everybody. You know, I mean, my, I had two grandparents that died from cancer. Tim, you've had family members die from cancer. A lot of you guys, uh, have had people that, you know, die from cancer and it just sucks. And of course, Tim, we talked about Ken Graham. He died from cancer and cancer just sucks. I'm hoping that we can continue to make progress on getting rid of it. And, but you know, it just sucks when this happens, Tim. He was 70. He was a former Williams pinball designer, worked on many landmark titles, including Gorgar. How many Gorgars have we worked right. on, Tim? Space the Shuttle, shuttle. Comet, Cyclone, Hurricane Trilogy, of Pinbot. course. <laughs> Pinbot, yes. So Barry had recently started working for American Pinball, Tim, as a game designer, having previously been employed at Deep Root Pinball. Uh-huh. And our thoughts and prayers are with his family during this difficult time. Really sucks, guys. He was very nice. He was quiet. Uh-huh. Okay, and he wasn't the kind of guy who did a lot of different, like, expos and festivals, Tim. Uh-huh. But... Just talking to him, he just seemed like a really genuine nice guy. Well, what an honor to get to meet him, John. That's yeah, good. it really was. And so, I, and I got to tell him how much I loved his game, which, uh, you know, uh, and we got to talk about it, which was great too. But um, just thinking about his family and friends, because I know it's tough, guys, losing people. And it seems like every live show that we've come on since the beginning of the year, we've talked about somebody we've lost. So I'm, I'm tired of it, but it is the way of the world, Tim. None of us live forever, right? Nope. So there That's you right. go. Anyway, I think that does it for all of our news. I'm going to go ahead and look at the live uh, the live chat here real quick. Um, Cybermine Arcade, Soul Calibur rules. Tim, of course, I have a Soul uh-huh. Calibur board yeah. in the closet. My goal is to make the Tekken tag into a switcher. Okay. I just haven't done it yet. So, Because I, I, ha- I have a Soul Calibur Arcade cabinet in storage. Right. But it's so big, I want it, I didn't want it in the game room. It, it's got a wide control panel. You know, those always take yeah. a lot of room. Uh, let's see. SNK versus Capcom 2, best fighting game period. Love that one, too. Uh, it's very good. Virtual Fighter took many quarters from me. Loved how um, how it was like Stun Runner and Hard Driving, but a fighter. Yep. Uh, YouTube Punk. Weird Al definitely deserves a pinball title. No I doubt. I think it's a great theme. I think uh, Multimorphic did a great job and can't wait to see it. Let's see. Uh, Cybermine Arcade. UHF is in my top 10. If you have not seen UHF, <laughs> right. that is a great it's movie. movie. Yep. You should watch it. So watch it tonight. Um, let's see. Video playfield with the real ball is the future. Yeah, if you've seen Multimorphic's tech and their ball tracking and how all that works, it, it it's, it's mind blowing. It's awesome. So it really is the future. So yeah, uh, and that YouTube punk video playfield with the real ball. That is what Multimorphic is. They have a video playfield underneath the what, like two thirds of the cabinet. Uh-huh. The upper third is where all the ramps and everything live, and and then the bottom third and then like your flippers actually are on top of the screen. Uh-huh. And so, like, the ball interacts with things in the screen. It's cool. Right. If you, I mean, you have to see it to, to really see how it works. So, uh, let's see. Um, Star Minor Arcade. So, did multiple tables, uh, but bumpers were the same. This route table has third of the play field instead of the entire table, but still cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, multimorphic setups. Some of them are a little different than others. Just depends on the game. Uh, Gorgar has to be his Mona Lisa for Barry Osler, Tim. What do you think? I don't know. Space Shuttle? Man, space how many are... space shuttles have we seen? Yeah. We've seen a ton of go- Gorgars, a ton of space shuttles. I can't even tell you how many we've seen. Mm. Comets. How many comets have we seen, Tim? A lot of them. Golly, comets were everywhere. And not to mention Pinbot. So, yeah, yeah, Pinbots too. I mean, so many games. But guys, I mean, to me, I mean, his Mona Lisa to me, or his Piste de Resistance, if you want to say, Tim, mm-hmm. will be Who Done It. I love Who Done It. <laughs> I can sit there and play Who Done It and just, just go at it. We, I love, love that, that game. game. So. Uh, rest in peace, Pinball Wizard from Cybermine Arcade. Absolutely. So, okay, let's go ahead and do our, um, our little announcement. Now, um, I should say something. Regzer Show, you were here earlier. I don't know if you're still here. We got your, your video, but I forgot to put it on, uh, before or after the show. So I'm going to try to work it in next time. I typically, typically Tim, I want to watch the videos before right. we put them on and I'll let Tim have an opportunity to watch them. So Regzer Show, I got your submission. Uh, we just haven't put it up here yet. Okay. But we'll try to get it into the next show. But with that said, we do want to remind you that if you have a YouTube channel and you want some free advertising for it, we're looking for people to submit short videos, 10 minutes or less, about arcade-related topics. Uh, Send a link of your video to questions at arcaderepairtips.com and our staff will review it. If we like it, we'll use it during one of our live show episodes. Make sure you put in a plug for your channel so people will know where to find you. We look forward to seeing your submissions. So there you go. Um, And again, Rigsar Show, we got your submission. We just didn't have time to look over it before the show and everything. We will try to work it in next time. So... But Tim, we started doing this because there was a lot, of cha- a lot of channels out there that were just on the cusp of getting monetized. We want to help you guys out, especially if you're an arcade-related channel. 
So if that's you, if you've got an arcade channel and you're just on the cusp of getting monetized with YouTube, uh, let us know and we'd be happy to uh, feature one of your videos if, if uh, we approve of it. So. And then, guys, we want to remind you of our contact information. We said it earlier, but the best play, place to get in touch with us is through email, questions at arcaderepairtips.com, questions at arcaderepairtips.com. If you put live show on the subject, we will save it for the live show. Otherwise, we'll try to get around to it when we have the time. Again, that's questions at arcaderepairtips.com, questions at arcaderepairtips.com. And we have our YouTube page at youtube.arcaderepairtips.com. Of course, Tim, everybody in the live chat knows where that is. But right. if you're listening to this after the fact, maybe the audio version, the podcast version of this, if you'd like to watch the after show, you'll have to go to youtube.arcaderepairtips.com and look up episode 61 for March 2022, and you'll be able to watch the after show there. Of course, the after show, Tim, is the part of the show that comes after the main show where basically any topic goes. And we'll talk about some teasers for that here in a bit. But again, youtube.arcaderepairtips.com. And hey, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button for us. Yeah, it's real simple. Yeah. So my son, Tim, he likes to watch like a lot of these kids' YouTube videos. And literally, he has this part memorized. Bye-bye. See you soon. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> so I think I'm going to have to get him to uh, do that. that. We'll record it, and then we'll put that up there. <laughs> so literally, he will do that. Just like we'll, we'll be doing something. He'll say, bye-bye, everyone. Make sure you hit subscribe. So <laughs> Too much YouTube kids, obviously, okay. Tim. But we do hope that you enjoy our content. If you do, make sure you like our videos and hit subscribe on that button. We would love for you to do that. And then we have our podcast feed, Tim, that features live shows, interviews, question and answer podcast, etc. That's um, our iTunes page can be found at iTunes.ArcadeRepairTips.com. For all you people who have iOS devices, you can subscribe there, iTunes.ArcadeRepairTips.com. And we would encourage you to leave a review, if you haven't already, letting people how much, letting people know how much you love this show. Right? And if you don't love it, send us an email and let us know. (laughs) But if you love it, leave a review at itunes.arcaderepairtips.com. We have our Spotify page at spotify.arcaderepairtips.com. I know a lot of you guys use Spotify as your podcast client. If you do, we can be found there, spotify.arcaderepairtips.com. We have Stitcher Radio. You can find us there, stitcher.arcaderepairtips.com if you want to subscribe there. Or wherever other fine podcasts are aggregated. Okay? So search for Arcade Repair. You'll probably find us. Right, Tim? Probably so. So whatever your podcast uh, podcast or choice is. Tim, I use Pocket Cast for those of you guys. I love Pocket Cast. I know it's not very popular. Some of you guys use Podcast Addict. It's a very popular one. on the, So whatever you use, search for Arcade Repair. More than likely, you'll find our podcast there. And then our social media pages. Tim, you gave a nice shout out right. to our social media earlier when we were talking about deals and stuff. But we have a Facebook page at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com, facebook.arcaderepairtips.com, and our Twitter feed at twitter.arcaderepairtips.com, twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. All the information is cross-posted between those sites, Tim. So anything that's on Facebook will get cross-posted to Twitter and vice versa. We want to thank Mark for posting a lot of the pinball stories for this month, Tim and for doing other community things for us. So thank you, Mark, for that. And for giving us the news story about the distributors, which was something that Mark actually contributed. We want to thank Mark for all of his hard work being a community manager now. And Tim, he's now the only one, of course. Uh, Guys, as we've talked about, Louie passed away. And so um, a lot of that has fallen on Mark. And so we want to thank him for his contributions. Always appreciated. And of course, uh, me and Tim try to post things that we see as well there. So facebook.arcaderepairtips.com or twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. You can submit questions those uh, there as well, Tim. If you want to send it to Facebook or Twitter, you can. Um, if you want to send it to me and Tim, though, questions at arcaderepairtips.com via email is the best way to go. Tim, I think we're done. I think so. So give everybody a little taste of the after show. So well. for the, if you're watching for the first time, the after show is the part that comes after the main show. Now, if you're listening to this on the podcast version, the audio version, we don't put the after show on that. If you want to see, if you want to listen to the after show, you'll have to go to YouTube. But basically the after show, anything goes. So we will continue to talk about arcade related topics and questions there, but pretty much any topic goes. So Tim, what are some of the topics we will be covering on this on this after show episode coming up. Well, it's almost hard to speak any conversation today without talking about maybe some world events that are going on. We'll talk about maybe some sports that are happening, uh, maybe the, uh, the wrap up of some Olympics things that we watch, and we'll talk about some TVs, uh, shows, and movies that we found interesting and that we'd like to pass some information along about them. Uh, maybe about how our val- how February went. It went came and went really fast. Yeah. So. You did something nice for your for your wife on Valentine's Day? I did something for her, yes. Okay, don't tell us what. We'll find out in the after okay. show. <laughs> I will tell you what I did for my wife as well. Okay. So we did Valentine's Day things, right? Yes. That's very important. Okay, you got to keep happy wife, happy life. That's right. Right? Isn't that what they say? 
But anyway, Tim. Uh, yeah, and of course, maybe a little bit about the economy. Maybe so. Yeah, There's some deals out there to be had. There, that's always stuff on sale. Absolutely. Lots of stocks so, on sale. Um, MLB lockout is something that I'm very interested in because I'm a big baseball fan. And mm -hmm. as you guys all know, that's going terribly right now. So we'll talk about that. Um, and just different different other things i watched the eternals oh okay. on disney plus the mcu movie uh -huh. i'll give you my thoughts on that if you want them um and a couple other things that we watch or that we are watching right now as well so anyway tim i think it's time to wrap it up for the regular show is there anything else you'd like to say or no, anything like thanks that? thanks for all the nice thank you john for the birthday presents you always go above and beyond um and thank you guys for the birthday wishes uh, you guys know how to make an old man feel special. Uh, glad that we're still around and still able to do these uh, these shows. I hope that you enjoy them and uh, that you'll come back next month. Yeah. Uh, so I think we looked it up, Tim. We have five weeks to the next show. It's going to be April 7th. Okay. So, April 7th. yeah, because I think the first falls on first falls on a Friday. So um, the next one will actually be five weeks instead of the normal four. So we'll have a little extra time, which is probably good because, Tim, next month's my birthday. I was going to say, right after your birthday... The big birthday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm getting old. Golly. The big, big year. So, well, you know, milestone I, birthday. I was about to say, so we, we've been friends since 2001. Wow. So that's 21 years. 21. And then, um, and then we've been doing this since 2008. So, wow. you know, golly, um, too long. Time flies. I'm telling you. So we do want to thank all you guys for being here tonight, though. Thanks to the live chat. Always keeping things lively, Tim, right? So let's see what we got here. We see, uh, Starman Arcade, I was a Robocop cop nut. Walked like him in fourth grade when it came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's see. I think see. we all did that, yeah, that's that right. walk. Uh, Joe, how's them day trading stocks? I'm up 2% and hopeful. Oh, we will wow. talk about that in the after show, so we'll get that though. But we do want to thank all you guys for all your support. Thank you guys for watching our videos, for uh, for sending in your questions. That means so much to us because I mean, it's, you know, and we try, guys, we try to answer them all. I, I will promise that our spam filter will pick up some, and then some of them, guys, like we may not get around to for a while, just depending. So I mean, we try to do our best to answer questions, guys. So please send them in. We'll try our best to answer them for you. Uh, Tim, we got some, we got a weird one. Uh, this month. I don't want to talk about it necessarily, but we got something that's like the opposite of what we do, and I told yeah. Tim about it last night, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll talk about it. I was going to say, we need to bring it up the after show. Uh, we'll see. I don't, I, know if I, trust, I don't know if I trust these people. Okay. We'll see. But anyway, guys, we want to thank you for joining us tonight, um, and we hope you'll stick around for the after show, or if you're listening to this, that you'll check out the YouTube uh, video for this and watch the after show. We'll have some fun there. But Tim, at this time, I think that does it. So, remember here at Arcade Repair Tips, when you fix the game, you play the game. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in April, or we'll see you here for the after show in just a bit. Thank you for watching this episode of the Arcade Repair Tips live show. All of our past episodes are available on our website at ArcadeRepairTips.com or on our YouTube page. This show is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please consult a professional before attempting to repair any coin-operated machines yourself. The preceding program is a Varcade Entertainment production.
but we're quiet. And we're back. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. That's what happens when you mute the microphone, Tim. Yep. Get to unmute it. We're back. So, okay, so this is the after show, Tim. So we talked about some of the stuff. We teased a little bit of it. So I usually start off with our very generic, how did your February go? Well, I think to start the after show, you got to show them your lights like you showed oh. me. Okay, I got the Since lights working. you got working. the lights working. Okay. And if they so we're on soft. Show. This is very soft white, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So if I change it here, very harsh white. All of a sudden, right. we got the color temp, right? I don't know if they'll be able to tell that much. I think I could tell it on you can the screen. Tell. Is I'm that just better? looking at the screen. We may I actually like it better. look better like that. I think so. I, I just don't. This is very harsh. Yeah. To me, well, I so, like it. And so if I change it back, this is this is how my game room has always looked. So okay. that's why Tim didn't know. But um, this, you know, the little scenes are like the the fun part, right, Tim? So let's do this. There we go. There. We go. It's a party. <laughs> now I really feel like a YouTuber. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. This is how this is how we should always do it. You guys would just oh, would probably freak out. Crazy. Exactly. I was about to say it's really cool when you got music going though. Right. So, um, let's go back. Okay, we're back. There we go. So yeah, those are the Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi color changing bulbs. So I mm -hmm. bought some of those. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's six, we have um, these are um, inset into the ceiling, Tim. We have the little insets, and so there's three on this side, three on the other, and yeah, we got some nice colors and everything like that. So it's fun. It's fun. Okay. Colors out of the way. How'd your February go? It was good. I said it went fast. fast. Uh, didn't get snowed in. Come close. Yep. Uh, little weather scares here and there, but not too bad. Uh, then we had Valentine's Day. And uh, so you, you said to mention what I got. For, so I thought I'm going to really do something different this year. I'm not, you know, of course you want to give flowers and take out to eat and all that kind of stuff. Sure. But um, we were... Um, I ordered something, and I ordered it a couple weeks in advance, kind of like you. I was hoping, and then all of a sudden, it wasn't going to get here by Valentine's. Oh, no. So, uh, but then it made sense when I ordered it. Uh, I guess everybody has a song, you yep. know. And uh, we like the song by The Cure called Just Like Heaven. That's one of our favorite songs. Um, you you might remember. Uh, the, so what I did was I ordered something from them, and it's the lyrics of the song, and it's putting a heart, and the band signed it and stuff like that. Well, I thought it was pretty cool. It looks yeah. like, kind of like a record. And and so anyway, when I ordered that, I didn't think, well, The Cure is not from Nebraska. They're from England. Yes. So it shipped from England. Oh, gosh. And so uh, something that normally wouldn't take but about four or five days here. It, it it literally arrived, I think, two days after Valentine's. Oh, man. But um, anyway, what, it was kind of a funny thing. We actually didn't celebrate till the next day. Uh, the 15th is the day I, I asked my wife to, I proposed to her. So we kind of celebrated on the next day anyway, and then it came the next day. But anyway, we still had some uh, good quality time. Got to go out and eat when it wasn't, wasn't crowded. The day after Valentine's and cashed in on some uh, after Valentine's Day uh, candy and stuff. So, there you go. How'd you do, John? Oh, we did good. Uh, so we cook at home. That's always been our tradition for Valentine's Day. So uh, we share the cooking responsibility. So um, this year we ordered the kit from HelloFresh. Okay. So the Valentine's Day kit. So, I mean, it's ready to go and you just put it together, basically. And it was like beef tenderloin, I think. Okay. It's pretty good. That's good. So, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it was kind of expensive. Probably could have eaten at a really nice restaurant yeah, instead. Say. Did you get uh, a sitter or did you? No, 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 no. We we cooked for the kids and okay. we all had Valentine's Day together. So okay. uh, got my wife flowers, of course. My wife is a big flower fan. Uh -huh. um, and then we got there's a local pie joint here, Tim. That if you haven't been just to, pies just or... pies. Oh yeah. If you haven't been to just pies. Yeah. Fantastic. So I went by and got a pie for her on. They were open on Monday because it was Valentine's Day. Uh -huh. Usually not. And so I got her, I got her a millionaire pie that we split, and oh, that thing good. was awesome. Um, yeah, they make everything from scratch. If you mm -hmm. haven't been, if you're ever here in the East Texas area, just pies, awesome. So, um, and then you know I got her a gift card and you know a couple other little things. So I mean, you know, it is a normal Valentine's Day kind of thing, I guess. I took my wife shopping, and um, I got some coal deals, and and you know I just something i don't know i thought about kind of buying her stuff but you, you, you know she's kind of like shopping for each other it's like um and guys trust me if, if you feel this way you're not alone nobody knows what size to buy don't buy the wrong size buy one 
three sizes too small and say, I thought it would fit you, you know, that kind of stuff. But uh, so what I did was I just took her to Kohl's. I said, buy whatever you want. There you go. And uh, so I, I put it on my Kohl's card. I had some coupons and stuff. It really didn't even spend that much money. And uh, she said that that was awesome. She never had anybody just say, what do you want? Go mm-hmm. get it. And so, um, you know, while the guys might have been wanting some uh, lingerie or something, she went practical and got some jeans and some other stuff that she needed. But you know what? She loved it. And so that was part of that was that's kind of what we did the day before Valentine's. So, uh, you know, as you get older, things get more practical. Like you said, you have kids that are little and it's fun to do stuff with them. And now that we're empty nesters, it almost felt weird. You know, it's like yeah. the kids aren't here. We don't. We normally would get them candy and do stuff for them. Uh, my in-laws sent us a, a card, I think, and had some money in it to go. It said, go out to eat. So that's what we did the next night. Sounds good. So actually, me and my wife are going out to eat probably this Sunday. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, we've, uh, we've been going out to, uh, how's I say? We've had some time lately to, to, to get out a little bit more, you know. You know so, um, it's nice now that COVID's not as yeah. big a deal. So, I mean, feels, and. Feels like things are Since we little... had it and everything, it's, it's at this point, it's kind of like, oh, you know, we're. We're okay, which is good. Um, but yeah, I thought everything went well. February was good. So um, actually, to be honest with you, like January and February went by faster. Usually, I kind of get down. <coughs> after Christmas, guys, I kind of get the after Christmas blues. You right. know what I'm saying? But it seemed like January and February didn't went by so time, fast, yeah. we just didn't have time. So a little bit different. Um, so I, And I was really looking forward to baseball season, but that's a different thing we'll talk about here in a second. So uh, any investment talk you want to talk about, Tim? Not a whole lot. There's some deals out there. There is some deals. and uh, there's I hear still... the ruble is really cheap. <laughs> yeah, <they're laughs> very cheap uh, right now. Uh, most uh, cryptos aren't doing very good either. Uh, so right now it's kind of a buy and hold uh, stage. I'm not really even looking but um, and, and holding on to some things that I have. Um, doubling down, buying a few more just to keep my investment low but um i i pulled out you know we talked about it several months ago i pulled a lot of money out just to just to have an account and just because i didn't want to lose so i'm not really losing anything i'm not gaining much either right which sucks especially when inflation is so high right so uh i understand tim i'm in the same boat kind of mm-hmm. holding on to what i got not making any moves mm-hmm. so um kind of right there uh, i need to do my taxes have you done your taxes no, I haven't. I did uh, one of the, the kids, and I'm getting the other kids ready because I do theirs too. Uh, you can look forward to that one day. And um, I'm really contemplating mine. This year, I can probably do it. Next year, I'll probably take it into account it because I'll have a lot of work stuff in there that I don't really want to deal with. Right. Um, but I did have also two jobs next, last year, so it, it probably won't take me too long. I'm not usually the last couple of years we have had to pay. So I am really not looking. For, we kind of put it off, uh, just in case we owe. I'll put it off um, till probably April because of that. Yeah, I I overpay my taxes on purpose. Mm-hmm. So you always get something back. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know it's not like the best thing. I don't do it by much. Just like fifty dollars more a check, you know, just to just so that way I don't have to worry about paying anything at the end of the year. Yeah, I just don't want to pay. So yeah. I mean, and so usually we get money back, Tim. It's not always a ton, but we get something back. Yeah. So I mean, my wife has four different part-time jobs. So right. that's what I have to contend with. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, though: you guys are empty nesters. You don't have anybody you can claim as a dependent. That's true. That sucks. It it definitely makes a difference. Yep. But uh, we got a deal with my daughter, so we we work something out with her where um, we don't claim her, uh, although she did live with us for a big part of the year last year. Right. And um, we could claim her. Um, even though, but it's, it's better for her, uh, where we, we kind of split the difference. She, right. she claims hers, but she gives part of it because she always owes us money for something. <laughs> so she just gives us some of hers back and it makes up for the difference we lost for not claiming her. Absolutely. If that makes sense. Yeah, understood. So we kind of, you know, we all, we all have to work around it like that. Yep. Yeah. Here's the thing, Tim, totally in favor of a flat tax oh, right here. Too, flat tax, flat tax. Just do it. Me too. It's so 5%, annoying. 10%. Across the board, that's what you pay. Right. Doesn't matter how much you make. Yeah. Rich people pay ten percent, and it's a lot more. Mm-hmm. I pay ten percent. It's little. <laughs> you know. Right. But I mean, like, have everybody just pay the same amount. Uh, I agree. And make like a, a flat, a flat personal tax, and then a flat corporate tax. I agree. And that that's it. But then accountants wouldn't make any money. Well, I guess not. So, and all the rich people couldn't get around all the tax laws. <laughs> I guess so. So I mean, it is what it is. But anyway, 
uh, just my thoughts. Change. Just my thoughts. So um, let's think about it, guys. Okay. Um, then Tim, you mentioned uh, world events. So this yeah. is kind of I think this is effective affected everybody. But Tim, I think the coolest thing about this is that almost everybody is in agreement. Right. Which is very rare. Right. The country's been so divided on every issue. We purposely try not to talk politics. I'm sure at some point, though, stuff gets said or, or did, just, uh, you know, it's almost, you can't say anything without somebody taking offense to it or whatever it is. And so it's good to be in agreement against something. And I think we, we all have come to this agreement. And then just to see the uh, people of Ukraine and what they're going through and uh, you know, I have 45 coworkers that work all in Ukraine. And so I'm actually getting some stuff, um, from our head departments. Like he's like, there's, they're, they're in hiding or they're, we're trying to get them out of the country. You know, I, I was really proud of my company for trying to help them and not just saying, Oh, well, you know, uh, cause they're not earning income right now. You know, they can't go and do their normal job like I do every day how stuff has been so disruptive over there. And, but then at the same time, I just scratch my head and go, why? Why are we doing this? I mean, this is the year 2022, and we're we're still just killing people for no reason. Nothing. I mean, what are you going to gain out of it? I mean, I know there's a reason, and I know, but it, it just really seems to me, John, it's more like showing the evil versus good. There's just, there's, there's just evil in the world that people would do this to other people. I think, I, you know, I saw the thing today at the UN and it's like there were only four countries that sided with Russia. Right. Four. Right. And, Everybody else is against them. And why did they? It's right. like, really, what are you, I think they're more out of fear probably than anything, but that that some whole countries would support this. Right. It's, it's scary. You don't invade sovereign nations. Right. Period. Uh, yeah. Empty. Easy. <laughs> it's real simple. They they were they were minding their business last week, going to or a couple weeks ago, going to work, doing their thing, and now they're in hiding or or shelters, or dead or injured, and it just seems I don't, I don't understand. It just doesn't make any sense. But I do feel like that somehow we've got to hold people responsible that would want to do that to some, another individual. Right, and and here's the thing, you know, obviously Tim, they're being sanctioned. And I mean that's that's gonna help. You know, several countries are lending them supplies. Ukraine are lending them supplies right. to help them, and we're one of those countries. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I don't know. I mean, I, here's the thing: Russia with the sanctions and everything. Every day that goes on, it's gonna cost them more and more financially to continue to do this war. Sure. And so Ukraine doesn't necessarily have to win; they have to just outlast. Right. Okay. And as long as everybody's giving them enough supplies and enough enough of everything that they need to wage the battle, I think that they will they will they will out, outlast. And I think one thing I've been impressed with is the the toughness, I guess I could say, of the Ukrainian people and the the fight. That I don't think that they were expected to hold. I thought they just thought they would all lay over. And uh, you know, the president of the country. What are they telling me? He, he They wanted to get him out of there, and he's like, I don't need a ticket. I need you know tanks and guns. I need help. I'm fighting uh, the heavyweight former heavyweight champ of the world. I know you've probably seen these memes and these videos and stuff. Uh, their their version of their uh, the representative Miss Universe is fighting for them. Their representatives, um, you know, so it's it. You really kind of root for them. They're the, certainly the underdogs or the David versus Goliath, if you will. And I just, every day I find myself that I see the president on the TV. I'm thankful that he's alive and that he is standing up uh, and that, you know, but then you just, but then there's so many other people, you know, the, the common people there that. And see, that's what, that's what I'm, that's what just hurts the my heart and, so much is that it's like, even if they're able to outlast, how many lives is it going to take? Exactly. I mean, this guys, this is bad. This is bad. Yeah. And here's the thing. Russia's just basically strutting this 40-mile caravan through there. Right. We should be giving, we should be giving <laughs> Ukraine military like, drones to yeah. go bomb that sucker. I'm like, that is a straight line of where to That's shoot right. your bombs. That's right, exactly. <laughs> uh, but if you don't have them, you can't do, you know. Uh, but, you know, then I also, uh, did you see the older woman, uh, 
she handed the Russian soldier some sunflower yes, seeds. Yes, I saw that the put, video. To put these in your pocket when you're dead and buried where some flowers are going to grow over your grave. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, so some of that, is, and I can't imagine what that would be like fighting here, you know. And um, It'd be like if Texas wanted to take Oklahoma. Right. Like if we literally just wanted to take over Oklahoma. Right. That would be, that would be the equivalent. And I mean, it's just... It doesn't really make any sense in this no. day and time. You've got a lot of land. It's not like you got a little bitty piece of land. But you Putin know. wants to put the old Soviet Union back right together. together. Right, together. Right. So, so he has he has made no bones about it that that has been his goal this entire time, and that's what he's aiming to do. And here's the thing: I'm the vast majority of the world is against him, and I feel like we are going to prevail. I and think the so Ukrainian too. Ukrainian people will prevail. I think so. In in the in the end. Uh, I, I do believe that. I just the it's the middle part, and the suffering that in the bloodshed that it's going to take to get to that exactly. point. Freedom's never free, and uh, but we do our thoughts and prayers. And if anybody listening, you guys have, uh, you know, it's amazing how many people I know that actually, oh my great grandfather was from Ukraine or or something, and and you know even in some of the Russian people that or innocent, even some of the Russian soldiers are only doing what they're ordered to do. They don't even want to be there. Right. So, uh, you know, we have good friends in Germany that's not very far from there. It just doesn't seem like it. You know, when we think about it, glad that we're way over here, but there they are. They're right there, you know, and stuff that could, could, ha could happen in a minute's time. So whatever, if you have friends or family there, our thoughts and prayers are with them. And I think that it, we needed, we kind of needed something to unite us. And I think... Um, an evil dictator unites people. So, uh, yeah, you know, video games unites us as a, as a group here, but I think as Americans we can all agree that this is not right, and so we hope that that situation changes for the better. I, I fear it may not, but at the same time I'm still going to be hopeful. And, you know, Tim, I'm a big one with saying thoughts, prayers, and actions. Guys, you guys can make right. donations to things like Save the Children and other organizations that are trying to help the people in Ukraine. Uh, Tim, we uh, we sponsor children through World Vision, right. which is a great organization. They've got people on the ground there that they're trying to uh, they're trying to get supplies to to help the Ukrainian people out. So, um, you, know, tr you know, donate a little bit. Doesn't right. have to be a lot, but show your support. In more ways than just thoughts and prayers. Back right. up some action with that. Exactly. Okay, if that's 10 bucks, throw right. it to a charity or something like that. I mean, here's the thing. We know a lot of the women and children right now are in Poland, guys. They're displaced from their homes. They're going to need food. They're going to need supplies and things. There's a lot of organizations that are there helping them out. There are organizations helping the Ukrainians still in Ukraine uh, to, to fight. Just donate a little bit. Show your support. If everybody does a little bit, it'll make a huge difference for that yeah. country. One of the coolest things that I saw was... At first, Poland's uh, government were saying, we're not going to allow in refugees. We can't handle them. Uh, please don't come here. And the people of Poland said, hold up a minute. It wasn't that many years ago a lot of us were refugees. The people of Poland said, no, let them come and we will house them and we will take them in and we'll feed them and we'll take care of them. And I thought, you know, this is what... Um, so thank you to the Polish people for just opening their borders and their hearts like that so you know hopefully there's some a lot of good that's going on too you know we we focus sometimes on the bad but good is happening too so that's what it kind of encouraged me you know uh somebody made a joke somebody was kind of being unruly one day and somebody said don't be like putin you know and so you know it's like don't be 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 like their leader stand up for what's right um, you know, take care of your family and stuff by, by all means, but help your neighbor too. And th we can all do that. We can do that in our own neighborhood and or give to a local charity or something or, or some homeless person or whatever that we can do. Um, if we can't uh, help all the way across the world, we can help in our own backyard sometimes too. Uh, but by all means, any, any help that you can give, I'm sure is greatly appreciated. And you can look up links. Uh, like I said, I've looked up several links about organizations that are on the ground there, Tim. Of course, like I said, we're, uh, we sponsor kids through World Vision already. They sent out an email saying, hey, we have this fund designated for the Ukrainian people. If you want to donate some <clears throat> to this fund, you can. And so World Vision is an organization. You can do your research. Uh, Charity Navigator is a great website, Tim, that'll tell you like how much of your donations go to like administrative fees versus helping people, all that kind of stuff. And if you look up World Vision or some of these other ones, you can see that. And so, um, you know, but... 
give give to good organizations that'll help these people out. And you don't have to give a lot. Right. Just give a little bit. Something to show your support. And may, I mean, if every person in the United States gave a dollar to I mean, right. we all know how much money that would be. So, I mean, just to give you an idea. But, you know, I think, like I said, I'm always a big one about thoughts, prayer, and action. Let's add the action on that, there guys. Give a little bit. Doesn't have to be a lot. So. And be uh, be thankful for what you got. You know, I, I saw a picture of Ukrainian people sending their kids to school and writing their blood type on their backpacks. You know, if you get to send your kids to school, you take them to school, and you don't have to worry about them getting bombed for the day, you have something to be thankful for. So it's easy to complain and gripe about gas prices or about this, inflation, um, even our president, you know, or, or whatever. We can get, we can just complain a lot. We really have a lot to be thankful for. Just the fact that, guys, we have arcade games, I think, is pretty cool. Something to be thankful for um, that we live in, a, in an area that's free. And I know this goes out worldwide. Not all of our listeners are even have those opportunities and stuff. But Hey, hey we're Texas. Right. And you know, if somebody wants to come and attack us, what do we say, Tim? Right. Come and take come it. Come and take it, right. <laughs> you, 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 you we be, will fight. Be ready. That's right. <laughs> Pride off my cold, dead fingers. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, right. you know, you're going to have to do that. Cause, and we understand. So we hope, you know, we know the Ukrainian people are doing that as well. They're standing up for what... To, to hold their country, Tim, and that makes a uh, it makes it not a difference just there. It makes but, a difference around the world. But it's something that's hard to discuss. But we have to discuss these things. We have to. What point in our uh, whole of humanity are we going to get to the point where we respect each other's own boundaries and don't try to kill each other? Exactly. You know, it, fight, war is murder of another human being. It's there's no. The, the only justifiable would be a response to keep somebody from killing you or yours, but there is no justifiable act to go and kill another human being. Just leave them alone. Let them live their lives or let them do their thing. There's plenty of, plenty of stuff to go around without trying to take somebody else's land and property and things like that. Yeah, so um, YouTube Punk said World Vision got a four out of four stars on Charity Navigator. Okay. Which means that they, they give a vast majority of what they get donated goes directly to people to help them. That's good to know. And, that's, and so whenever you're donating to a charity, you should look it up on Charity Navigator because it'll tell you how much, a lot of times it'll tell you how much of, of their money goes to that. And he said it was nine point ninety one point eight six out of 100. Goes to actually helping people. Only nine percent, basically, for administrative That's fees. That's good. Okay, and, but there—I mean, there's a lot of charities out there, Tim, that take like fifty percent for administrative fees. Uh -huh. Don't donate to those charities. Donate to charities that don't take a huge, a huge amount of your donation to administrative fees. Okay. So World Vision is one that we that we use. Tim, we also have Children Through Compassion International, which you've probably yeah. heard about as well. Both great organizations. And like I said, World Vision specifically sent out an email saying that they're uh, they've got a fund set up for Ukraine. So if you go to their uh, website, World Vision, you can probably find that fund and donate to it directly. And I encourage all of you guys to do that. I'm gonna leave all it right. there. Yeah, let's go into sports. <laughs> okay, so sports. Uh, Tim, you keeping up with March Madness at all? You know, very little. Um, I. I haven't really even uh, kept up with much college basketball this year. Texas um, Tech was number nine there for a little bit. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. And Oklahoma pulled a lot of upsets, but they just could not. I don't know that they make the top 64 teams or not. Right. And so um, they, that's their first year for their coach, uh, kind of a rebuilding year, but they did pull some big upsets, Texas Tech being one of them. Right. So I don't know. Um, I haven't. I'll, I'll probably. As the games start, I usually do end up watching. Okay, so you fill out your you're gonna fill out your bracket. Yeah, I fill out my bracket and, and and play along at least. But I have not kept up. Uh, probably if I had to guess, I'd say Gonzaga is gonna win it all. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, Tim, you keeping up with any NBA, NHL? Not much. Mavericks beat the Lakers the other night. They did. Don't and know if you saw that. They have uh, they have been playing a lot better as of late. Mm -hmm. um, but. No NHL for me. I haven't really. It's like there is not much time in a day, but a lot I would like to keep up. What about you? Um, you know, I, I watch NHL whenever I can, Tim. I don't uh -huh. always watch. I like to watch the stars, but uh, I've been watching some basketball kind of when I can. We're getting close to playoff time for both these, though. So I don't know if the stars are going to be able to make it in. Looks like the Mavs will make it into the playoffs, but I don't know if the stars will. So kind of looking at that. Um, let's talk about the lockout real quick. The MLB lockout guys. Um, Really disappointed right now. They canceled the first yeah. week of the season. Um, they have to play, I think, at least 144 of the 162 in order for them not to cut the fees they get from the the TV broadcasters. Okay. And so, um, and so I don't know. I mean, if we get close to that mark, I think the owners may be more negotiable. 
Maybe. But right now, they're they're really not offering close to what the the players want. Um, what the to me, what the players want may be a little overboard. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so they definitely need to meet in the middle. How long that's gonna take, I don't know. All I want to do is watch some baseball. Yeah. So it's like figure this out, guys. Let's just play. Let's play the game. So I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, Olympics, Tim. Did you see anything in the Olympics? Were you, you know, interested in it at all? Or? Um, I caught myself watching some events. Um, yeah, the Winter Olympics are. I'm, I'm more. I do like the Summer Olympics better. I guess because I just like Summer Olympic sports. Um, but and when the NHL players couldn't play. It might kind of didn't make the hockey as, as interesting to me, and normally I love to watch Olympic hockey. Um, I caught myself though uh, watching Sean White uh, uh, surf or do snowboarding for the last time, you know, and there were some really good competitions there. And occasionally I caught some of the speed skating and stuff like that. Uh, but overall, I would say that mine was probably down 50% of what I normally watch. And I don't really know why. Maybe it's just busy time of life or other stuff I had to do. just seemed like I didn't watch much Olympics this year. Me neither, Tim. And I don't know if it was just because I wasn't as interested in it or what the deal was. I mean, we watched, I watched some, my uh, daughter, she got to watch a little bit of the luge. She thought that was pretty cool. Okay. So we watched a little bit of that. We watched some snowboarding stuff, watched some... Uh, some other things, but for the most part, I mean, I, I didn't really watch much of it. And so I don't, like you said, I think we're all just all busier now. It's tough to sit down and just watch some. And there's not one sport in the winter Olympics that I'm just really excited for. Right. So, Maybe so. Kind of the same way. Uh, let's talk movies and TV shows. Tim. Okay. So, um, let's talk about the movies and TV shows you watch first. Okay. I finally, um, got to see American underdog, which I wanted to go to the theater to see, but never could get a way to go. Um, I did really enjoy it. Um, if you like, um, just want to know more about Kurt Warner's story. Uh, I told you it's more story than it is sports. So there's, of course, football scenes in it, but it's not. It's really more about him, how he met his wife, the struggles that they had, uh, you know, uh, working in a grocery store instead of getting cut by teams uh, and then to finally make it like he did. It's an amazing story. It's a good movie to watch. Um, the other thing, we're still watching um, Revenge. Uh, I told you it's 45-minute episodes, 20-minute seasons. We're in season three, and we watch it literally almost every night because it's it leaves you on a cliffhanger, and you got to watch the next night. Uh, it, I would say that after the first season... It just becomes really soap opera-ish, but I can't quit watching it now. I've done come this far. Uh, the first season. <laughs> hey, you can stop at any time. I, I wish hard. I would have stopped. Like, I should have stopped Heroes after season one, but yet I've yeah. seen every single Heroes thing ever. So. I would I would compare it to that. I mean, at first it's real realistic, and you're wondering who died, who was that, because it starts off with a death, and the whole first season leads back up to that point. Who died, and what was it? And then after after the second season... Typical soap opera stuff. People that are dead coming back to life miraculously. And, you know, just it kind of gets crazy. It is heroes. <laughs> yeah, it gets kind of crazy. But I'm still in it, still watching it every night. But uh, I caught myself interested in this because I'd read about this. I watched The Tinder Swindler. So this is on my list to watch. Have okay. not seen it yet. Well, uh, I mean, you know what it's about. It's basically about a guy who uh, swindles people or, or, you know, catfishes these girls on Tinder. And uh, so it's just really kind of crazy. I mean, almost brilliant that how he gets away with it for so long. It, when you find out in the end it's been going on for years, uh, basically, you know, he's robbing Peter and paying Paul all the time. So I just thought it was it was way more interesting than I thought it would be. Put it that way. I kind of started watching it and really got into it. I was like, wow, this is... And it was really good. So well-directed and stuff and well... Really kind of makes you think. Uh, and kind of scary, too, at the same time, you know, that there's people out there that would be like this. Um, so anyway, it was, it was really good. Other than that, uh, that's about it for me. That's about all the time I've had. John, what have you been watching? So I said in the tease, uh, in the tease that I saw the Eternals, okay, mm-hmm. which is on Disney Plus right now. You guys can watch it. Uh, it's the last MCU movie to come out before Spider-Man. Right. Um, it's bad. Really? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> bad. um, it's pretty bad. It's the worst MCU movie. Um, it's okay. worse than Thor: The Dark Age, which was the previous worst okay. MCU movie. <laughs> um, it's. I mean, it's 
so-so. I mean, don't... I wouldn't watch it unless you're just really bored like I was and was just looking for you're something to watch. You're glad you didn't go to the movies and see it? Absolutely. Okay. Don't go to the movie theater to see this. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was okay. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, if you're bored and you're just looking for something to watch, mm -hmm. it's fine. But um, my daughter is on a huge Pokemon kick. Oh, um, okay. She has, she has... She's played through Pokemon Shield. Now she's playing through Brilliant Diamond. And so, um, you know, a while back, there was a Pokemon movie released with Ryan Reynolds called uh -huh. Detective Pikachu. Okay. We had not seen it, so we watched it, and it was pretty good. I was surprised how good it was. Uh, and, uh, you know, my daughter wishes she lived in a world where she had a Pokemon companion that would follow her around all the time. I told her she has a dog, but apparently that's different. And, uh, you know, but Ryan Reynolds does a really good job mm -hmm. as the voice of Pikachu, and, and eventually you do get to see him in the movie, Tim. I so. did see Free Guy. I didn't put yes, that in Free there. Yes, Free Guy is really good, isn't it? It's okay. I like it. Yeah, it was kind of It was way better than I thought it would be. Exactly. Like, yeah, that's I, what I didn't have about. high hopes. Right. And it was kind of more entertaining than I thought. It was kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah, I thought Free Guy is good. Entertaining. Yeah. So, um, Pokemon, though, uh, Detective Pikachu was very good. Okay. So, I, I mean, it's a kid movie, kind of, but it, uh -huh. I mean, it's Ryan Reynolds. He always right. does good. He's funny. You know, and he's funny in that, too. Mm -hmm. um, Storyline's a little, man, kind of a little scary, but, um, you know, my didn't face my daughter. She was fine. So, uh, there you go. Um, let's talk about some of the other things. So, um, one of the things in the top of the Netflix queue right now, like on everybody's Netflix queue, yeah, is Inventing, Inventing Anna. I've, I've got that on my list to watch. Don't bother. No worries. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. It's, it's way longer than it needs to be. Okay. It could be, like, half the time, and you would get it, and... Really, half of it is about a reporter. Okay. And the other half is about the the the, uh, the Anna. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's the part that's interesting. The reporter stuff's semi interesting. Okay. Um, I would say don't waste your time. Okay. Um, unless you're just really bored and you're looking for something to watch. But gotcha. uh, you would be better off watching Murderville. Okay, Murderville. Do you, you know what Murderville before? is? I think you mentioned it last okay. time. Okay. Did we talk about Murderville? A little bit. Okay, so Murderville um, has uh, oh, what's his name from? Um, he's he's in the he's in the Lego thing. He's the voice of Batman on the Lego Batman movie. I I can see it. Will Arnett. Okay, it's got I'll Will Arnett I'll put in Murderville it. Down. Yes, Murderville. So it's got Will Arnett in it. Okay. okay, he plays a grizzled detective that investigates murders. I've seen it. Okay, I've seen it, but I didn't really. So know. So there's a catch, though. Okay. okay, so there's this whole there's this whole fictional setup where he's a detective and he investigates murders. Every week or every episode, they bring on a random celebrity, and the celebrity has no idea what they're going to do. Okay. The celebrity is clueless, and they have to figure out who murdered whoever their storyline person is. Okay. So Will Arnett sets this whole thing up. There's a murder. He takes them around to the different spots, the celebrity. Now, the celebrity mm -hmm. gets no script. Okay. They have to just act, you know, they have to do what they're, you know, kind of act like they regularly would, right? Okay. I mean, so, like, how they would react, how they would, things they mm -hmm. would say, they have to kind of come up on the fly. Okay. And so, it's really funny. Uh, okay. Because okay. these poor celebrities have to, and <laughs> at the end, they ask them, like, who did it? They give them, like, three suspects uh -huh. and a murder victim, and they ask them who did it, and they have to identify who they think it is. Okay. But the celebrity has no idea about anything that's going mm. on, and except so for the clues. It's kind of a part reality show, yes. in a way. Okay. Yes. It is really fun. Okay. It is really fun. Um, and Will Arnett's funny, anyway. I love Will Arnett, um, but he does really good in this. We've seen half of it so far. Um, the first episode is with Conan O'Brien, and Conan O'Brien's funny anyway, mm -hmm. but he does really good in it. In it. Um, and then there's an NFL player I can't remember who it is. Um, and but there's several people. There's several people in it. You should watch it. It's funny. Okay. Um, we've been watching the Marvelous Miss Mizell. Okay, uh, I've seen on, that. Yeah. So on, because season four just hit, uh -huh. it's coming out every Friday. We're watching that. I've been watching Pam and Tommy on Hulu. Okay, I've seen um, that. So with Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee uh -huh. and the sex tape and all that. So that's what that's about. It's interesting. Um, on Apple TV Plus, there's a show called The After Party. Okay. Which is a murder mystery show. Basically, um, every episode, this murder takes place. And every episode, you get a different person's point of view of what that murder is. The finale is tomorrow. Okay. But every episode, you get a different perspective of the murder. Mm. which is interesting. So a different character, you kind of go through what happened to them that night. And so you're trying to figure out like who, who did it, right? Who did it, right. It's a whodunit. Okay. I love whodunits. We've already determined <laughs> right. this. We've talked about this. Um, I actually bookmark um, something else on Hulu today um, with the Theranos. I seem like I'm watching more Hulu than anything for oh, some yeah. reason lately, more than Netflix. Yeah. So the one about the Theranos um, girl, I can't remember. I'm going to look it up right now. Um, but that one looks interesting. I put it in my queue. Let me look real quick. Let's see. The Dropout. 
So that's about um, that's about the lady who did Theranos. Um, and it's got Amanda Siegfried, uh, yeah, Siegfried, or however you say it. Mm-hmm. She plays Elizabeth Holmes, who's the who's the person you know, the the whole scandal with Theranos. She the little lab testing machines. Do you know that? Yes. Yeah, same kind of thing. So oh, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do want to watch okay. that. So that's on my list as well. The dropout. Um, and then there's some short. Um, do you, have you seen the boys on Amazon Prime? Yes. Okay. There are some short. 10 minute, eight minute episodes that are going to be released tomorrow that are all cartoon based and it's called The Boys Diabolical and so I will be watching those because I'm a huge boys fan. Okay. Is that it? Let's see. We got Joe says, Good night guys. I always feel like I'm hanging out with old friends here. You are. You are. Mm-hmm. That's why. Uh, YouTube Punk says, Gotta drop off. Uh, take care guys. Happy birthday Tim. Thank you. So there we go. So I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. Um, we're running off the live show. So Tim mentioned it in the regular show but uh Next time we have our live show, I will be 40 years old. Yeah. So this uh-huh. is a big one for me. Um, we're gonna we're renting out a movie theater. Tim's Tim's invited, um, and we're gonna watch Sonic the Hedgehog 2, because that's what 10 year old me would have wanted. Okay. So, <laughs> right. So, and you. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. Um, so I'm gonna I'm inviting some friends like good old Tim here and some of my other friends, and um, I fun. wanted to do something too where my my friend we have a lot of friends who have kids yes. to where they could bring, their, bring kids, their kids right because yeah. I mean it's like. You know, you can have it somewhere, but it's not always kid friendly. So mm-hmm. we were like, well, so we're gonna have it at the movie theater here. We're gonna rent it out, and we're gonna watch Sonic the Hedgehog two. I'm looking forward to it, Tim. I don't know if you've seen any of the trailers or anything, mm-hmm. but um, they're really funny looking. Um, he, they're the last one that they released. He does like a Batman uh, yes. impression, which is really funny. So, uh, but um, huge Sonic the Hedgehog fan. When I was a kid, Tim, I was all Nintendo. Right. But anytime I went over to a friend's house, I had a Genesis. Man, I was all I was over that Sonic. thing. Yeah. So I was all about Sonic. So. Um, I was a huge Sonic fan, so looking forward to watching Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for my birthday. Actually, the next time we see this, I will be 40 years old, but we will not see the movie yet. Right. Okay, because it doesn't come out till the 8th. It'll be the day before. So, or day before the day before. But anyway, looking forward to that. Um, I don't think there's anything else. And Arcade says, hey, birthday. Thanks for the show. Catch you guys next time. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. I think they're all, I think they're all hinting to us that yeah, it's time, time to, go. to go. Yeah, absolutely. It is time to go. It is time to go, Tim. I'm all, um, I so get in bed. before we do anything, uh, before we sign off, what's the Home Depot gift cards for? Because um, he asked for that. So well, I'm I'm, I've got a collection of Ryobi Plus One tools now. Okay. And I just got the, the water sprayer car wash uh, tool attachment. But I almost got, I need some limbs trimmed around the house and stuff. And they make a pole with a little bead chainsaw on it. Yeah. And so you put the battery on there and then it reaches up about 10 or 12 feet and you can hit those limbs like that. And it's like 140 bucks. So I was like, um, it's not something I just would go buy just because I need to trim some. But I need, I would like it to add it to my tool collection. Uh, so I really have got quite a few. I've got a leaf blower. I've got power saw, drills, uh, sanders that all use that plus one. And the more I use them, it's cordless and they have a lot of power. I have a nail gun that uses that. Um, they just seem to work really good. So I'm really interested to try it and see if I can't do is I what I want to avoid is climbing up on a ladder absolutely and doing it. So if I can do it from the ground and get that done. Uh, every time I go to check the mail, I'm like dodging branches to go down the walk. And so I've got to get out there. And, of course, the yard guy was like, oh, I can do that for you, you know, and I'm for more than it would cost for me to buy that tool. Of course. So I was thinking I could just buy the tool, add it to my collection, and then I'll have it for whatever. Well, you better uh, you better start uh, working your arms above mm-hmm. your head mm-hmm. because if you don't, by the time you get around to that, you're going to be super sore. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I've repainted our little... Our little, uh, what is it, like spring sets, like last, summer before last. Uh-huh. And like, I, I couldn't imagine how sore I, I was because I never put my hands above my head. And right. so now I put my hands, I do jumping jacks to make sure I get my <laughs> hands above my head. Because I mean, you don't you don't realize if you don't use it, you know, yeah, it's well, like, you, you do. You, yeah, you, for you, sure. you'll be sore. But that sounds like a really great gift. So I hope, yeah, that, I hope I'm you get hoping enough. that, like I said, it's something I normally wouldn't buy. If it was 39 bucks, I would just buy it. But, you know, it's a, it's a little over $100. And so I was like, well, I could take in your gift card. My wife got me a gift card. My grand, uh, my in-laws gave me some money, so I have plenty of, uh, of money to go down and just purchase it. And I got a coupon and stuff, so I will probably go do that this weekend because I really need Joe to get said, on that. Um, it's at their outlet store. I only buy there now. What's that? Oh, uh, the Ryobi. Yes. Store. 
So I, I, don't know where that I is. have a guy uh, that sells reconditioned stuff that I buy a lot of tools from, and everything I've ever bought has been great. But yeah, they do have a lot of. of uh, I would love to have an outlet store near here. YouTube Punk says he's older than me. Yeah, you know when I got into this, I was the young kid. Yeah, uh, when you were. Me, yeah, when me and Tim, when me and Tim met, I was still, I was just over being a teenager. Um, right. So, uh, and most of the pe- people that I knew were my age and grew up with those games, but right. now. You have a lot of friends. Now there's, when we go to Pinball Festival, there's a lot of people your age. Right. There's like, we've kind of combined forces. Yeah, so I mean, here's the thing though. I loved arcades my entire life. And so when I met Tim, it was just natural for me to start working on them. Uh, you know, I didn't, and so it didn't matter how old I was. I've always loved tech. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I've loved tech my entire life. And so, I mean, I'm an IT guy for goodness sake. So, I mean, but uh, yeah, so I'm turning 40. I feel, but you know, I mean, Tim, they're, um, you know, there, there are kids now younger than us that, I mean, I think about, uh, you know, some of the kids that we've met over the years through Arcade Repair mm-hmm. Tips that were younger than us that were learning how to work on arcade yep. games. So as long as there are new people coming into the hobby, hopefully the, the knowledge will always be there is, right. is what we hope. So anyway, but uh, I don't know. I feel old. So I'm, uh, YouTube Punk, you may be older than me. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I say I feel old, Tim. But to be honest with you, I kind of feel the same that I've always felt. I mean, it, well, I, I'm better than I was in my 20s. In my 20s, I gained a lot of weight. So mm-hmm. I te- technically, I'm in better shape now than I was. But um, it's weird seeing someone and being shocked that they're 40 and then realize you're older. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but but here's the thing. My parents, you know, I don't think about my parents. My parents look the same, too. I feel like they haven't aged at all. Well, the 80s to me feel like 20 years ago, and it's 40 yeah, years ago. It does, exactly. doesn't seem that way. So, I mean, Tim, I mean, Tim, for the most part, I mean, seems about the same, too. It's like, I, when mm-hmm. I see people, I don't think about how they look now versus how they looked then. I just always think about how they look now. <laughs> I don't know. You can go back to our early videos, and you definitely tell my hair is a lot, lot, lot grayer. This and... is what happens when you work on arcade games. Yeah. <laughs> you need to get some just for me up in there. It's hanging on. That's yeah. all I'm caring about <laughs> right now. <laughs> Hey, you get. Have you seen the one that you get the little shampoo? You know, you just rub it in, and it just kind of just darkens it. You know? I have thought about that, and probably honestly, if it was up to me, I would dye it or whatever. But my wife loves. She has always loved the gray hair. There you go. And she, it could turn more white and gray to more, and she'd be happier. So I'm like, well, as long well, as she, easy maintenance. as long as she likes it, then I, then you know, she colors her hair now. But you know. I, but she won't let me do my. Aunt Arcade says, "I've way. seen your videos from years ago when you're just a young buck. Yes, I'm older than both of you. There you go. <laughs> so uh, I'm not that much older, but still, yeah. So I mean, when I got into this, like I said, I mean, I would go to the auctions. I was definitely one of the youngest ones there. Yeah. Like when me and Tim would go. I mean, it's just so weird to, e- even Jerry, and you know, it, and uh. If you don't so remember like, Jerry from like our early, our early stuff, I haven't seen it. Did you see a picture of him recently? I haven't. I, I have just on Facebook or what. I haven't seen anything quite recent so jerry you need to send an updated picture but i know he's buying a house and stuff it's just weird to see people like him grow up connor just turned 28 right so you know 28 years old it's like how old you were when i met you yeah, yeah. That, well no i was you I were was younger, younger than that, that way younger than that so. i was younger than that crazy yeah but i've always been here's the thing, i've always been old even though I was young, I was old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, right. I mean, it's kind of like an I've always soul, been an old man. Say, I'm, yeah. I am just as I just, I'm just as grun like just as uh, grumpy as I as I used to be. <laughs> so, like, that that hasn't really um, affected me. I was thinking um, I was thinking about somebody real quick. Uh, Josh Kulak. Mm-hmm. So when we met Josh, he was in high school, and his parents brought right. him up to Hag, and now he's got, got a, a baby. Kid. Yeah. Um, I got him a PS5 recently. Hope yeah. you're enjoying it, Josh. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, like literally, so since we've been doing this, there are kids who have grown up watching us. Right. Because in 2008, Tim, and now it's now it's 2022. Right. Okay, so 2008, that's 14 years? Yes. Golly. That's crazy. So, anyway, All right, guys. We're, we're going. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> we're going to stop talking about how old we I'm are. I'm going to go take my Metamucil and go to bed. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> good you night, all, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a great uh, have a great March, and we'll see you in April. Take care. <laughs>